Welcome to the Planescape, where good and evil clash, where law and order maintain their delicate balance, the battleground for gods and monsters. Many heroes have written their legends in the stars of the Astral Sea, but these are not their stories. The Per Aspera and her crew, Kiana, Finbar, Virla, and Danny, may not be the stuff of legends yet, but they're definitely rolling with difficulty. Hello, and welcome back to Rolling with Difficulty. This is our second episode of the adventures of the crew of the ship Paraspera. If you're just joining us for the first time, what the hell are you doing? This is the second episode. Go back and listen <laughs> to the first one. They were numbered for a reason. Uh, if you're returning after listening to the first one, thank you so much for enjoying enough that you uh, wanted to come back. This is the adventures of the crew of the Paraspera, which are our uh, Fearbolg ranger druid, Finbar, played by Wally. Our Mecha Knight, uh, see Warforged wizard, Virla. Hello. Our primordial-born fire genasi, Artificer Danny. Hey, hey. And the mysterious newcomer to the crew, the way of the astral monk, Kiana. Yeehaw. I mean, hi. <laughs> oh, God, this is la- Ah! It is a space a western in a way. Bold oh, yeah. character choice. Mm-hmm, making mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> we pick up our story uh, not far from where we left off at the last time on the last adventure. The party, President Sigil, had some conversations about their future as a newly formed crew. The intent to see the planescape, especially for Kiana, who is new to the group, as well as keep on the move, taking jobs here and there. Uh, You started by taking a job from a new patron, a private collector, who sent you to the Astral Sea to inspect the remains of a dead god found floating there in hopes of finding a heart. You made your way to the floating corpse, and after some trials, investigations as to the history, the origin of this creature, and a strange, conjured, more than illusion, but not real uh, library, you were attacked by the predator lying in wait there, the Baal Hanath, who gave you guys what for, but Hmm. once again, the crew of the Paraspora prevailed. You succeeded in killing the aberration, secured the heart of the dead god, received your payment. Now you find yourself back on the Astral Sea on your way to drop off uh, actual payment from the job before that, which had been conducted Mm. for someone from Danny's background, from her home in the plain of Elemental Fire. We pick up as the party approaches. Virla, you at the helm, uh, helming the way. You guys, this is a frequent trip for you, so... The stars in this area are well known. The navigation system that you have is almost an afterthought. You know where this colored pool, this portal to the plane of elemental fire lies. And you are approaching rapidly. Virla, if you want to let people know, this would be the time. And Danny, if there's anything you want to share, especially to the newcomer. Virla has definitely been there. Finbar has been there probably once or twice. But this is your home turf you're entering. Yeah, we just got to go drop off payment for the last job we did, actually. Well, I guess it's the second to last job that we did, technically, because we got fucked up by that space slug in the meantime. (laughs) You know how we had to, there were those fire newts and that uh, crazy chick that you knew came and we were like fighting and they had eggs in a box. It's all familiar Uh to us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got paid for that. As we all know. As we all know. The eggs in the box. Gotta go, gotta go. Pay, give the payment to the guy who hired us. Uh, it's uh, my uncle Otto. He owns like a junkyard in City of Brass, so it should Ooh, be a quick trip. Exciting! Yeah, it's fun. Makes sense to me. Owns this ship, technically. That's it. Uh, made it tomato, you know. Hmm. Uh, do you remember where we put the uh, sunscreen? We're gonna need. We're gonna need some sunscreen. What uh, sunscreen? <laughs> mm. Enbar, you're the only one who needs sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before Kiana, yeah, the little one needs around. sunscreen. I too. guess that's a good a point. One. Yeah, Kiana, are you resistant to um, fire? Um, I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, we need some sunscreen. I mean to say that. <laughs> I mean to say that the sunscreen was your responsibility, since before Kiana came along, you were the only one who needed it. Where is it, Finbar? Uh, <laughs> you know what? It's probably somewhere in the kitchen. I probably got it all mi- mixed up again. Give but you know, we step. haven't tested this yet, I think. Like, a lot of other stuff has happened, but I don't mm. think fires happened to me yet. Well, you didn't uh, have a great time with that omelet last time. 
You're right. That's probably a bad sign. Okay. How 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 hot is this going to be? Like um, you know, like if there's just a like a candle in front of you and you stick your hand in it. Uh. Like in the fire. How often do you do that? You know, for warmth. So if you do that, uh, uh-huh. that's like ten uh-huh. percent about how hot it'll be on the in the plane of fire, um, because everything is on fire all the time there. So. You know, that'll be a nice change of pace. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's great. It's cold freaking everywhere for me, so this is a <laughs> relief. But um, yeah, sometimes people who are not used to it do tend to get a little crispy. All right, cool. Th- this will be interesting. Yeah, it'll be good. We can get some fire slugs. Are those like like the omelet, or? Mm. <laughs> uh, you guys, mm. uh, as you have this conversation, <laughs> first of all, uh. Uh, Finbar in the kitchen. Yes, it appears your swarm, your pixies have hidden the the sunscreen. Pretty appropriate for them, as well as it's pretty typical for everyone except for Danny. Probably going to need uh, special goggles when you get there. The whole plane is very bright, but the city of Brass especially. Um, so it's typical for people who are not born there to wear. There's probably a name for it, but it's the goggles with the little slits in them. Oh. Uh, oh, like a racer. Uh, basically, those to keep <laughs> yeah, the, the brightness glasses. from blinding. <laughs> Like those cool. sunglasses that everyone was wearing to parties in like 2009, you know? Oh, no, they, um... that's not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, they had the, like the, it's the day of black them. sun eclipse goggles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like for snow blindness and stuff like oh. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thank you, Red. I'm just picturing. Yeah, no I'm just picturing the the glasses that everyone was wearing to parties in 2008. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I'm sure that's what like you're going to be wearing. In neon plastic <laughs> colors, and then they just had like a bunch of slits in them. We all are no, familiar. No, no, no. Yet. We, uh, we know what you're talking about. <laughs> My disagreement was not not because I didn't understand what you were referring to. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys approach the colored pool spread out before you, dark embry red surrounding where the endless water from the sea of stars spills over the edge downwards into nothing. Uh, the ship crests down for a moment, the sense of falling, and then you rise from darkness uh, into blinding light. All around, the ship has sort of a atmospheric barrier around it when you're going to the more treacherous places. It provides a sort of protection for those aboard the ship. Dripping from that invisible barrier, now now clearly seen, molten rock slides down as you emerge from just a pool of lava. Oh. The ship rises into the air, flying over the black and charred banks along this this ocean huge lake it goes to the horizon however large it must be just pool of molten rock surrounding it a forest of just blackened trees with leaves that are all dancing and appear to be constantly lit with embers you rise up and catch your first glimpse of your destination nestled in a sky of roaring flame as if the very sun had been pulled down almost to the surface uh, of the plane a floating rock ringed with a wall of brilliantly shining beaten and polished metal you arrive at the grandiose and appropriately named city of brass there is a uh, sort of skyport section of the city as you crest up into the sky and get your first glimpse of the actual uh, layout from on level with the city instead of from below. There's sort of an, an opening in the wall for ships, and you, there are some ships, not nearly as many as Sigil, but some ships flying in and out. In fact, it is a the the harbor that floats itself is also lava, and there's just like a thin trickle waterfall that seems to always be falling down off of this rock. You guys move through the gate, touching down with a sizzle into the fiery harbor and making your way toward the dock. Here you get a glimpse of the city proper. Tall spires and palaces, as if the entire city is just for royalty. Palaces everywhere stretch black basalt and other igneous rocks form the main structures, but nearly every design element here is brass. It is brilliantly blinding, reflecting the dancing lights in the sky back at your eyes. Now is an appropriate time for the crew to lower their glasses so as to not be blinded. (laughs) Virla, you know the way as well as Danny, and you make your way towards one particular dock at the edge of a shipyard, scrapyard of some kind. These words perhaps alien to the denizens who work here, but the description would be appropriate. Some ships dry docked, suspended above the lava, 
all over the place, bits of different wood and machinery and ship parts and stuff strewn about, not far behind it all, just an enormous mound of crap, just things <laughs> discarded and left behind. Welcome to what Danny might think of as home, but what most other people simply refer to as the heap. You guys dock, the ship settles and parks, the gangplank lowers, and you are able to disembark. Making sure the ship is all tied up correctly, but then, you know, head down the gangplank and try and find our, uh, our patron, if as it were. Yeah, Plug immediately runs with you and then kind of like runs off <laughs> to go chase and stuff. Oh, would you consider Plank a boy, a girl? Like, how, how would you refer to uh, plug? a pronoun? Would you use for Plug? Uh, Sorry, Plug. Pl- plank. <laughs> plank is Plug's plug, evil uh, twin. Uh, secret <laughs> secret evil twin. Um, uh, on the brain. <laughs> uh, plug, probably a boy. Plug, okay. He's a, he's a, you, you see know, him run off. Him, so. There's a, what looks like a fire giant who has like charcoal covered with like a shock of bright red hair. Seems to be carrying some huge piece of like rudimentary machinery, kind of like steam engine style. It's huge even for this giant. Plug like runs in and out. You hear him kind of like shout down like, hey, what's the vermin? And (laughs) kick at Plug and then Plug like runs off into the, into the heap to go chase mice, presumably. Yeah, he's fine. Computer yeah, mice. you know where to <laughs> find Otto. So if that's your goal, you can head off to his office, so to speak. Yeah, you know, we got to pay him back for the job he sent us on. So I suppose if no one's got anything else to uh, do in the meantime, that sounds like uh, the to-do list item. Go check that off. Cool. You might need to pull me in the right direction. I don't think I can see very well under any circumstances in this place. Goggles or no goggles. I'll stay behind Kiana. I'll stay like at the back of the group to kind of help guide Kiana in the right direction. Cool. You, every now and again, uh, like, no, no, this way. Uh, Danny, you lead the charge mm-hmm. towards the office. You see, especially for Kiana, who's looking all around this. Yeah, there's, oh, yeah. there are a few fire giants here, but the majority of the people here seem to be fire genasi, which is, of course, what Danny is, as well as the Azer, which are the fire dwarves. Just like normal dwarves, except... Instead of hair and beards, they have, like, a mane of fire. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> there's a lot of them. They're very stout. There's, like, a ton of You see there's, like, seven or eight of them standing in, like, a circle around a piece of, like, Vanta black metal. Ooh. Ooh. In fact, I probably even should... It's, it's, like, near white hot right now. So, like, maybe near the edges you can see it's really dark, but most of it is currently white hot. They have furnace nearby, and they are in a round, like, beating it with hammers so that... There's never a moment it's not being beaten. Instead of each of them like having to rear back, they can like perfect like clockwork, like ding, 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 ding. By the time it gets back to the first, they've wound up again. And they're currently beating this into some shape. There's a couple of the fire salamanders who you've now seen, but uh, that's the majority <laughs> oh, right. of working here. You make your way to the main building, which is by most accounts, fairly grandiose, but in comparison to the rest of the city, very ramshackle, no less brilliant and gleaming open the door and you see the disorganized array of Otto's workshop and Otto himself. Otto, a older fire genasi wearing a very nice red jacket, almost trying to literally and figuratively cover up the messy coveralls that are underneath. I'm a businessman sort of look covering up the true mechanics underneath goggles pushed up his head, holding back long black dreads that as he turns his head, you can see underneath is like magma that's always just kind of gently running down, casting a faint glow from the back of his neck. He turns and says, Ah, Danny, how fares my ship? Pretty good. We got your uh, pay job in the last one, and I'll toss the bag of uh, gold, I guess, that we've scooped up from the ground (laughs) after the fire newts wiped the floor with us. He catches it with one hand. Ah, fantastic. Another job. Well done. I expect nothing less from my a skilled crew. You see he turns and hands it to, there's a Azer standing next to him. Zax, if you could, please account. Uh, Zax, the fire dwarf, looks up at him and goes, mm, and walks over to the table and you see pours out the gold <laughs> and starts like piling it up to count. He looks back over you and then eyes land on Kiana. Oop. And um, who might this uh, new charming addition to the uh, motley crew be? Hi, um, I'm Kiana. Your crew rescued me from the middle of the Astral Sea, and I've just been kind of helping out since then. Good, good. Glad to hear uh, helping out. I uh, would, would hate to think of uh, my crew taking on a charity case. That would be, <laughs> you know. What does that mean? Oof, uh, we'd have, <laughs> well, we'd have to discuss it. some uh, extra form of payment, I'm sure. But oh, right, money. Additional labor aboard the ship is uh, always welcome. So 
Uh, yeah, welcome Kiana aboard. punches things uh, real good. She's Aw, thank you. The muscle. Well, <laughs> Finbar's also the muscle. It's like more muscle. It's, we're muscling it out, you know? <laughs> You see me, I have, like, just everybody's backpacks, um, uh, and I'm sweating my ass off, just, like, trying to make sure everybody gets in. I'm like, okay, we made it. I'm in the corner, just taking a rest. I'm okay. Uh, this this shop is so cramped, Finbar. There's no way you're comfortable. Um, no. There's shelves with all sorts of stuff everywhere. Danny, and I you're can't talking, eat any trying to describe... You can't eat anything. You're trying to describe why Kiana's so useful, and Otto is completely moved past you. He reached out at a uncomfortably warm hand to shake. And uh, you say stranded in the Astral Sea, where do you hail from originally? I hear it's called the Prime Material Plane, uh, I think. Yeah, she's a Mundy. Yeah, yeah, you bring that doesn't prime sound polite, but. Fascinating. Ooh, so you're new to all of this excitement then. Yeah, it's really, really shiny over here. <laughs> yes, well, you know, if you're ever interested, pull up a chair, I can tell you some stories. Some of them Ooh. would even be true. Oh, huh. Okay. <laughs> but at this point, Zax has finished counting the gold. They raise their head up and just give a thumbs up and a hmm. Uh, Otto nods. He goes, says, seems that uh, payment has been made in full. So your fee then, payment for a, a job well completed, goes and reaches and hands each of you a crisp 30 gold pieces, except for Kiana. <laughs> Sorry, but you're not on the contract you understand oh but of course yeah if you're interested then next job we could put you down for percentage Ooh. beginner rates of course you got another sure. job for us gotta start somewhere i do have another job actually been waiting for it specifically for you since you're so skilled and uh, capable i needed my best crew on this one actually um, I, uh... come with me um, it requires some <laughs> yeah, how can much I, uh, is he, how much is he us yeah we're, we're getting pretty <laughs> i'd like to roll an insight check <laughs> roll insight check. checks roll insight checks <laughs> That sounds like uh, okay, a yeah, thunderous. That sounds like it's just. Ooh. <laughs> got, a, got a bit of brown on that nose there, Otto. Well, Danny is into it because okay. no. she rolled a hearty, hearty four on that insight check. Oh, hold on. Insight. Yeah. Insight is one yeah. of the only skills I'm good at. I rolled a natural I, one. I gotta oh. try this. Danny hold on, and Birla are very trusting. Uh, Birla okay. rolled a natural one? Yes. I rolled a natural 10, which means I only got a 17. Nice. Ooh, Holy shit. That's pretty Inside. good. Finn? That's pretty good. I'm good at like two things. <laughs> How'd you do, Finn? Uh, 15. 15? Fifth, 17. It's <laughs> just enough. Very funny that you, of all people, um, <laughs> would be the first to sniff it out. Yeah, you sense just a hint of. He's definitely brown note. Like, he's definitely trying to suck up to you guys a little bit. Huh. Even though you don't know. And perhaps this is the reason you would catch on to it. Everyone else is kind of, I think, caught off guard because he never does that. He tries to always maintain power, so perhaps the sucking up caught them off guard and butted them up. Um, but you mm. immediately see through it, uh, being from the monastery, not being really used to that sort of thing. You're like, I've seen this before, when mm. the monks were like, oh, here's a great and awesome job for you. And then oh. they stuck you with something that was dangerous or you hated. You're like, wait a second. <laughs> oh no, this, this is going to be a great honor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. Um, he opens the door as you walk out. Uh, Zax, Danny, who pass by, gives you a little like shoulder, which they're a dwarf, so a shoulder is like kind of like a hip check to you, and just gives a little nod. Goes, uh, <laughs> I'll I'll give him a a little shoulder pat and thumbs up and a mm, back. They go back to doing what they're doing, and uh, you guys emerge back in, under the uh, brilliant firelit sky. Otto begins talking again immediately, a fan of the sound of his own voice. I uh, entered into a contract with a uh, genie lord of the city, interested in acquiring some unusual transportation. Luckily for him, I have contracts uh, and friends in low places, literally and figuratively speaking, of course. So I uh, contacted an old business associate of mine from Bator, turns to Kiana to like explain a little condescendingly. Oh. Bator is the Nine Hells. So I know it as. Sounds festive. <laughs> they do love a good party down there. Not the fun Any guy. case, <laughs> contracts drawn up, you know, they're very good to do business with beings of utter law and all that. And they delivered. And you round a corner and you see, for all of you, an alien sight. They have wheels, so they must be like carts, but each one only has two wheels. 
mountain oh. and sort of like a metal body connecting them <laughs> it's like a it's like padded seat on the top they it's like you could sit on it but do you like mm-hmm. you guess you throw one leg over like a horse sort of yeah. and it's got these handles so i guess you can steer it that Are way alien to all of you but <laughs> in description matches that of a motorcycle Oh, um, shit. about a dozen of them. That's extremely cool. I thought Segway, but that works way I more I thought sense. Chariot, so I'm glad that only thought, Noir yeah. was on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, the logic, my, my internal logic was like Chariot and then Vespa, and I was like, no, 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 no Vespa. High fantasy Vespa, get yours today. Uh-huh. A hidden memory. <laughs> You see, like, there's there's a couple, like, there's, like, some fire Nazis, like, going over them, like, you do, like, a little, like, tinkering in inventory. Devil's Rides, they're called, at least down there. It's, I think, sort of, not good branding, really, Devil's <laughs> Rides, and that's very literal, but seems to work for them. They're uh, utilitarian. Used on the war front of the Great Blood War, of course, these things are hard to come by, and, well, if you're looking to get into any sort of scrape or combat, then... Uh, quite useful unfortunately devil's uh tricky things i should have praised the contract a little more closely it appears that fuel was not included in the deal we signed and unfortunately my contact now insists upon raking me over the coals so to speak for fuel that should rightfully be mine under the spirit of our contract so this is where i was hoping that you could um of course, for payments, utilize my ship to uh, sort of square this away from me. So, uh, what's the fuel I, is for these things? Vegetable oil? I got plenty of that back on the ship. <laughs> Nothing so pedestrian, of course. There are special coins found, minted only in the Nine Hells, I believe, in the city of Dis. That's neither here nor there. You certainly don't want to try and make it into that place. But they're used all over hell and uh with just a quick trip to the uh layer of avernus should be able to sprout some up (laughs) i paid a um yugoloth to divulge some trade secrets they have their ways in their ways out they're always looking for an extra coin you see he withdraws a disc which is the exact same kind you you guys use to you put it into the navigation and it can point you when you're in the sea of stars he says traveling avernus is difficult to say the least, it can be inhospitable to those not nearly as talented as yourselves, I'm sure. But he assures me that the location here, the colored pool, will lead you close to the war front. Of course, be careful if you approach there. Uh, devils and demons, conflict of eons and millennia, blah blah blah. Best not to get caught up in it. More importantly, the war front has uh, lots of goods going in and out. I'm told there is a special type of infernal war machine that brings supplies from Dis all the way to the war front in Avernus. You'll know it by its many linked cars running along tracks of steel, I'm told. Are we doing a train heist? A train train heist heist in hell? (laughs) Oh, okay, so let me get this straight. We're we're going after fuel for these two-wheeled death machines in hell. Yes. Uh, and By rating a four-wheeled death machine from hell. I'm told it has more than four wheels, but... Five wheels? Seeing as the contract was not kept in spirit, I see no reason that we should play by their rules, so simply appraise the situation, take what you can from aboard, and we'll call the whole thing square with this uh, fiend who cheated me out of my... Uh, there's got to be a nice shiny reward for this, though. Come on. Sorry, just checking. We're stealing them from the thing, right? Yes, but they're devils. Okay. Do you have a problem with stealing from devils? I don't know. Um, are they mean? Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're uh, as mean as they get. Okay, they are, then this uh, should be fine. I just wanted to make this. sure. The last couple times we've been picking stuff up from people who wanted to give it to us. You know, it's just, it's all good. Oh, the, they certainly will not. You hear from across the uh, courtyard where Danny is over by the bikes because the minute that there was something <laughs> constructive oh, popped up, she hustled over there and yeah. has not heard any of this. Uh-huh. I got a question. <laughs> uh, yes, Danny. Can you pay me in one of these bikes? <laughs> <laughs> these bikes are promised. I can offer you, though, a handsome reward of 50 gold pieces each upon the return of at least 100 of these so-called coins to my possession. What about the blueprints to make one of the bikes? Uh, I apologize, but I don't have any uh, 
blueprints uh, for uh, I can't make them myself, otherwise I wouldn't be up Shit's Creek without a paddle, so to speak. We could take <laughs> one apart, and then we write all down we did it, and then we put it back together again, and no one will ever know. Then I'll know. Still the issue of the fuel and my buyer who's waiting, but if you want to procure your own or outbid the buyer for one of these devil's rides, then I'm sure we can do some sort of business. I don't know, guys. I think we should take the job. <laughs> Was that a question? Uh. Oh, certainly not. It's my ship, and if you didn't take the job, I would simply hire a crew who would. Oh. We'll go to hell. <laughs> yeah, this... It sounds exciting. <sighs> it sounds stressful. Mark? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I gotta make sure y'all get there on in one piece, and y'all leave in one piece, and Danny's gonna freak out about these bikes. They're so cool! If we can get you one of these bikes, we'll try, but no guarantees, alright? I just want an opportunity to, like, poke around and, you know, like, see how they work. This is You don't get a lot of opportunities to examine the engineering of hell, you know? They're very, um, closed about that kind of shit, and, uh... Huh. Closely guarded trade secrets, it's true. This is an open secret right here. <laughs> They'll probably still be here when we get That's back. That's why I hired her. Keep her on. All right. Looks like we're going to be causing just a little bit trouble in hell. Okay. I, I got some preparations to do. <laughs> Austin, what the fuck are you having us do, man? We're going on a train heist. We're going we're just on six a train heist. You're having us go it's... to a furnace? <laughs> It's we tradition day, day train there. heists in episode two. <laughs> episode two train heist. Oh my god, yes. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm sorry, I <Andrew>. Well, <laughs> it seems that you're eager to undertake the job, so I assume you agree to the payment of 50 gold pieces each. I'll get a contract, uh, have Zax drop a contract, and you could be on your way within the hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lean over to Danny and be like, is this easier or harder than the dead god thing, do you think? Uh -huh. Danny okay. is like head, like, you know what, like, mechanics are like laying under the car to fix it. Danny is fully yeah. like laying under <laughs> yeah. a bike as you're trying to talk to her. Uh, you right. see Finbar walking uh, towards the stuff again, uh, just like uh, walks behind uh, uh, Danny and uh, Kiana says, it's, it's going to be harder. This, this, this is going to be okay. much harder. So then should we, should we get paid more than we did for the, the thing? Is that how that works? I don't know if it would be beneficial to even let Otto know that we took on another job before technically finishing the first job he asked us to do. Oh, is that, is that not a, is that not cool? Eh, it's a, a bit of a, a wibbly area, you know, it's sort of, um, things better We got the job done. We did get the job done. Okay. So technically we didn't do That's anything all that wrong. All right. Okay. I don't mind. It's just, you know, money seems kind of complicated. It's like, but you guys would know better than me. They're not melting the coin down in the engine. It's just, it's functioning a little. How do they make that fuel work? Hmm. We're going to get in trouble if she takes these apart, right? Yes. Okay, uh, right Danny, here, right <laughs> we should probably get under the bike, <laughs> out from under the bike. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, it's good fine. Luck like with five that. more minutes. <laughs> um. Plug comes running out of the <laughs> the. the Mounds of crap hops uh, to your belly. Uh, Danny is uh. lying on your back. <laughs> oh, I'll, hey I, will, I will take. I will drag Danny by the foot <laughs> and just start just out from the back. No! The, <laughs> the fire genasi who's been working there just walks up, looks at you quickly, there, and goes, "Thank you." <laughs> and goes back to appraising them and like making sure everything is <laughs> tight and stuff like that. Check the fuel you are gauge. Welcome. It looks like like the back axle was a little loose. You might want to tighten it. And Danny's like getting dragged, <laughs> laying, still laying down, <laughs> letting Virla drag her away. <laughs> Noted, Danny. Got it. The guy says. <laughs> we all start to go away. Cool. Is there anything else you want to do? Any preparations? I guess you would like to make before you get underway back to the Sea of Stars. I'm good. I think. I was just <laughs> making sure I still had a health potion yeah, in my inventory. I'm double checking something. All right. So mission one. Get a bunch of coins. Mission two, steal Danny a motorcycle. <laughs> or... Ob optional task. Op Full synchronization. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Optional uh, objective. Primary objective. <laughs> you can unlock um, a secret level if we steal the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. We all need a little extra healing. There's Devils play a lot of nasty tricks. Mm. And we all need a way to... Uh, Bring someone up. In case we run into them. Yeah. You know, I might manage to slip out of that. I don't mind getting more health potions, considering that I, 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 I used up all of yeah. mine. <laughs> I, I think we all need more than health potions. potions. of healing, <laughs> currently. Okay. Well, definitely more health potions. Um. 
you will get to sleep. Uh, you okay. probably wouldn't know this until you put it into the computer, but it's it's more than a days. That's quote air quotes because uh-huh. time does not really exist on the astral sea. There'll be it'll be more than right to you guys feel like twenty four hours of travel to reach the colored pool that you you have the map to. How difficult would it be to get a spell scroll of lesser restoration? Mm. I will. It's definitely going to be possible. Let me just do a quick uh, look up to figure something out. Is there anything else people want to do? If there's a place to get more health potions, I mean, more the merrier, I will absolutely sure. buy more health potions. Yes, certainly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Also possible. So to be clear, you're signing the contract as is. I wouldn't know to negotiate for more than fifty gold to go into just, hell, but uh, one of these guys 50 might. Fifty gold sounds great, but give me like. 30 minutes with one of the bikes. If we come back from hell with the fuel. She's, she's, not, she's not going 30, to that. We don't this even have to drive. It's non-negotiable. 30, yeah. 30 minutes. He, <laughs> yeah. he rubs his temples. Uh, he says, if it becomes unsellable, the price is coming out from you. Great. <laughs> I'm glad you're so on oh, board with such an obvious <laughs> thing I just said. This is why I like you. Oh, good old Danny. Um, oh, no. Cool. Yeah. So you guys are currently in the district known as Iskalat, which is the docks. This is the only place. There's like lots of inns and taverns here. It's the place where you're going to find the most like people from other planes. You guys are probably looking to go to... There is a yeah. There's... I am excited to see more of this beautiful city. I was just gonna say, you know, there's some uh, there's some great local cuisine. You know, you can get. I like fire slugs a lot. There, these people like sell them on the side of the road and stuff. Uh, there's um, hmm. uh, curries of various kinds and like uh, you know. All the food here is hot. You all, could. All the food here is hot. There's like a really okay. great. Okay. Uh, like, like like on a scale of one to omelet. It's great How in the bad? morning. It really wakes you right up. And uh, omelet is standard here. Uh-huh. I should. Ooh, Actually, we could get omelets good. again. The There's that... a great diner like down the road. You added the hot sauce to the. Omelet, I think I'm good. The omelet. I almost said almond. <laughs> you added the hot sauce to the omelet. So, uh, <laughs> you 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 should. Yes. No. Yeah. I mean. The, the it was a learning experience. Uh, I learned that I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay, on a scale of one to <laughs> omelet with hot sauce, <laughs> I, I should be more specific. So here are your options. The two closest by and best places that you probably want to go to obtain health potions, possibly a spell scroll, and of course the much discussed fire slugs is the rookery or the district known as Pyraculum. So the rookery is a hive of scum and villainy, Mos yes. style. Hmm. Gambling, pit fights. There's like very few guard there. So like the the salt, um, there's a sultan who rules over the city and he has uh, the fire genies. Um, the Afridi are his guards. They don't really set foot there, but it's the place you would get the best prices for things if you can brave it. Pyraculum is the uh, city market and craftsman district. It's you're going to be your standard market. That's going to be a lot safer and a lot better chance of finding things, but you're going to pay like more reasonable prices there. Yeah, no, we ain't getting into fights while we're here. <laughs> All right, so Pyraculum it is. You guys travel up. The city is it's like it's an it's an oval, and you guys are like uh, down at the narrow end, so you kind of have to travel up which brings you into nicer parts of the city. You're getting closer and closer to the furnace. You can barely see. There's a wall that surrounds the whole city. There's another wall inside that surrounds the Sultan's Palace called the Furnace. And you can see just glimpses of it. It is ostentatious out the wazoo. Just the little bits of spires you can see as you walk towards Pyraculum. Spires made of gold dotted with diamonds and rubies. (laughs) Kind of fancy. Brilliantly (laughs) dazzling. Thieves yeah. That's real shiny. And it is all built for one being. But that is not your destination. You guys make it to Pyraculum, which is exactly what it sounds like. You've moved out of the like sort of multicultural area. Basically, everyone here is an Afridi, which here in the city of Brass, the Afridi are more or less, like that's a lot of the population here. But in the whole plane of fire, they're sort of counted as like royalty in a way. So imagine you're standing in a section of a city that is just like all lords. There, it's it's sort of this tough thing where the entire plane of fire is enormous. 
So there's like a lot of these pseudo royalty to use, uh, using air quotes, but they all kind of come here into the city of Brass because it's the place to be. So there's like a huge high number of them concentrated right here. But there's also most of the vendors are like fire genasis. Again, there's the fire salamanders and there's uh, fire giants. Fire giants are remarkable craftsmen. So there's a lot of like blacksmith shops here that are selling uh, all kinds of like arms and armaments and stuff like that. It's also the home of the Edible Bazaar, which is if yeah. you're looking for fire slugs, exactly where you want to be. I got us, guys. Uh, as Danny describes it correct, they are there are street vendors who sell them, and they're like they're slugs. They're probably about like a they, they look like slugs. They're probably about like a foot long, and they come on long metal skewers, hmm. but they have scales along their back, so the underneath is where you, it, they sort of come in their own bowl. <laughs> so to speak. So they're not they're not snails. They don't have a big shell, but they do have armor on their back that is like iron scales hmm. that you can kind of, they come skewered on a stick, but then you can kind of like eat out of the shell, sort of lobster style. So anyone who huh. wants to try those can of yeah, course I'll buy partake. a couple and like give them out. <laughs> I'll go like get two. Yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, can it's, uh, try it's some. not my favorite. This, oh, this is a rich city, so things are expensive here. Go ahead and get rid of uh, two gold pieces to buy Ooh. stuff for everyone. Yeah. Would my guild have any uh, chefs here? Could that, oh. that could possibly give us a discount on such a... Oh. There's definitely chefs here. The question is, would you know them? So go ahead and roll me... I need like a socialization check. Like, have you met someone? So go ahead and roll me... Um, <laughs> In yeah. D&D? Go ahead, Ridiculous. Go ahead and roll me like... Great charisma. A charisma check, <laughs> but go ahead and add your proficiency because, okay. like, this is, this is your guild, so it, it okay. would be someone you'd interact with. Okay, not bad. Fifteen? Yeah. Oh, totally. Uh, you see me? I, I sort of fish out like a little pin, little emblem, <laughs> um, and uh, I go up to some of the vendors. Just like, y'all know a chef that carries one of these? Yes, they point you to a place. It's an unnamed stall. A lot of things here, like, don't, because this is, you know, pseudo medieval times, a lot of things here don't have, like, names, but they call it the roast bird because there's, like, a huge, like, picture of a phoenix over the top of it. But it's basically, like, it's not a stall, it's a building, but you can't go inside. What's the word? It's like a counter service place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, yeah, they point you to it. You're looking for a person called Roast. (laughs) <laughs> unclear if that's their real name or if that's just what everyone calls them but yeah you you approach there is a female fire genasi flaming hair pulled back you come approach the counter she goes hey what can i get you folks two fire slugs please howdy ma'am uh i see and i flash my pin uh are you a member of the searing tongue ah member of the guild welcome to uh, our little corner of the planescape First time in town, you're visiting, uh, you know, I mean, uh, coming, I, coming back. I don't normally come all the way out here, but uh, we're just picking up a job down by the scrapyards, and they wanted some of the local food. Uh, Danny's all about it, yeah. but uh, and I, I don't personally Watch like the slugs. Watch out, people but... here. Uh, business can be tough. Yeah, always uh, happy to see another member of the guild. Fire slugs, one for, there's one, two, three, four of you. Yeah, you, better, pass, you better just give us two of oh, them, because uh, three. these three are... Slug avoidant. Avoidant. Gotcha. All right. I'll try a discount. We'll call it, call it a uh, uh, three silver for the whole thing. She goes, you know, uh, fire slugs. Uh, you know, the, the trick people tend to over season. That's the problem with them is they come with enough spice as it is. So you, a lot of people here, they're gonna tell you that they have the best recipe, but the best recipe is really it's just about how long you cook them for. You gotta roast them for. Yeah, at least 36 hours. They're flame resistant, so if you want to get the tenderness all the way through, that's the trick. Y'all writing that down? As you see some of the pixies come out with a notepad, (laughs) scribble it. Oh, you got little friends coming out of your coat. That's so fun. They're the only reason I got through the academy. I gotta, I gotta get out more. You know, we don't see enough, enough uh, fantastical stuff in this city. You know, it's just you um. know the regular home, you know, um. home depot, like uh, you know, regular day to day stuff. Uh, I gotta, I gotta get out and see the sights. Fully speechless <laughs> over, over here right now. <laughs> <laughs> Plug is following you. Plug, Plug is a well trained not cat. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plug plug is plug is with you, but uh, we'll happily try. Uh, sits down and is like waiting for you to tear off a piece of your fire slug. Yeah, I'll like lo- I'll like sit on the ground next to him and like hold the fire slug low enough that so that plug can just eat out of the slug oh. too. Um, <laughs> disgusting. I love yeah, it. It's my boy. Uh, yeah, you. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you spend a little time enjoying. Uh, so who who's he? Danny, you're used to it. Who else gets a fire slug? I'm trying a slug. 
but I might yeah. not eat the whole thing. No, no need to roll a con save here. It is hot. It is spicy. Whew. Not much for me to say about it. Escargot combined with, uh, <laughs> you know, ghost pepper. You get what you pay for. But it's got good flavor and it is hmm. very tender, which you wouldn't really expect from s- slug, probably. A slug. Yeah, it seems no. that uh, no, she I would does not. have, she, she, she's onto something with her trick, I should say. You guys partake of the meal. Before we leave, can I say, um, you know, if you ever need something, I'm sure you, you can get your ingredients. I'm out on a spell championship right now, you know. Um, I can pick oh, up any next time so. I'm back in, I can pick up something for you. No shit. Very cool. I get most of my ingredients delivered. You know, I got my vendors. But uh, if you pick up anything new and interesting, I'm always happy to try a new, new experiment with new ingredients. So nice meeting another member of the guild. You take care now. She goes on to help some more customers. Who There's like a huge line that's formed <laughs> now. She's been talking to you guys for some time. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like 15 or 20 people just waiting. Danny just like, you know, someone starts arguing with her in line. She's like, eh, you fuck her off. You <laughs> yeah, you guys turn and you hear her shout to someone like, keep your pants on. Uh, to avoid stretching this out into an entire session. Healing potions. <laughs> this is a city of wealth and things do not come cheap. So uh, your 50 gold healing potions are going to run you uh, 80 gold. Okay. I'd say there's enough for like each of you guys to get two. If you want to spend, that'd be 160 gold. Seeking the spell scroll is trickier. You have to go to a curator. You can't just buy flame tongue swords uh, anywhere. <laughs> That's not, it's not easy to, to get more powerful magic items, but specifically potions and spell scrolls of first to second level, which this does fall in, are available. And so you don't need to be a member of one of these private clubs to try and uh, obtain them. Find a uh, basically a wizarding shop uh, run by a fire giant who explains that they have a deal with nearby church. They're able to procure some spell scrolls uh, of the divine nature. You can purchase a scroll of lesser restoration with the expense of the city. It's going to be about a thousand gold. It's going to be the difference between life and death, and that's a majority of my money. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you I guys shall have it out. A thousand gold. <laughs> We got a thousand gold from the mm. from the guy with the diamonds. Man, yeah. I really don't pay any attention. I don't know. What did you there spend it take... on? Yeah, you know, <laughs> as long as it goes into the ship eventually, I don't really care what we do with the money. Huh? Yes. Uh, yeah, purchased. I currently have right. uh, forty gold left. We are we are not great role models for Kiana to understand money. You guys complete your purchases, uh, make your way back. The ship has been polished up some in your absence. It is auto ship. He likes to keep it in tip-top shape. So we had some crews come in and, uh, you know, they, they sort of polish up the, the fittings and things like that. Quick scrub along the decks. Do it once over. Make sure they didn't touch anything important on the end. Like, as long as they just polish it up so it looks nice. I don't want them messing with the mechanics, you know, the, the ins and outs of how this ship uh, works. Auto has had people do that. He's had people do that in the past and it hasn't worked out. So they have not <laughs> messed with anything since then. Then he just booby traps it. <laughs> He's learned more or less to kind of let you do your thing. Otto stands there to see you off. Best of luck. Please, please be careful and return safely with the goods, please. Okay. Keep one of those bikes on the ready. I, the more you ask, the less I'd like to do it. It's in the contract. <laughs> we'll get you one when we go to hell. It'll be fine. You say All that. Right. Yes. They're... Good luck in hell. What? Wish you the best. I ain't been to hell. I know. Never heard a good thing about it. See you in hell. People keep talking about hell like it's like means something. I, I feel like I'm getting into something. <laughs> mm. I'm getting slightly bad feelings about this. Uh, you guys, uh, whoever sits in the helm, unmoor, drift off, and then you're able to uh, utilize the unique function of the Paraspora and plane shift back to Astral Sea. Bright, blinding light immediately fades to dark night sky. Uh, yeah, I can't see lit shit. Lit open by the stars, <sighs> mirrored surface reflecting their light. <laughs> Danny, you're immediately blinded because it's so Jack, dark. Uh, everyone else, uh, you realize <laughs> uh, you've been squinting for hours and your face hurts as you relax those Ugh. muscles. You're like, oh God, have I been, I've been doing that the whole time? Oof. That was so uncomfortable. Not very luck because you have no muscles, but... Who, who would like to helm this voyage? Sitting at the helm, uh, I have a couple clarifications about piloting the ship. Uh, the first thing is that piloting the ship, when you do so, it costs no action to move it. You use your, it's it's an action to get it uh, to like anchor it or uh, unanchor it. You can like kind of lock it in place. More or less, it doesn't, uh, you just sit in it and then you use your movement to move it. 
but doing so requires concentration as if you're concentrating on a spell. So to do it for more than eight hours results in a level of exhaustion. Also, I think last time I said that most, uh, I, I have a clarification, I think I said that monks couldn't power, like they could only make it go like 10 feet around, but Kiana was special. Kiana is special, <laughs> but monks actually count as half casters because of their key. Uh, a regular monk would be able to power the ship as fast as Danny. Yeah. Kiana, you're able to do it as fast as the wizard, which is again, unique. Virilil would like to offer um, Kiana to pilot the ship again because, uh, well, out of, out of, you know, courtesy and kindness, of course, but Virla is also curious as to what the fuck's uh-huh. going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will uh, completely uncritically take this as a uh, face value as just a nice thing to do and absolutely take you up on that for the first uh, eight hours. about it. What the fuck is going on here? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, is there any, like, are you trying to, you want to, like, roll, like, an Arcana check or something? I'd like to, yeah, it, like, while while Kiana is, um, is piloting the ship, Virla would like to spend some of his his time away from the helm to also maybe like go into his room and research what the fuck is going on. <laughs> dum um, dum. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you are a sage, so this is actually a great time to uh, talk a little bit about your uh, your room. You were found with the ship, so you have a room. It is very similar to how you left it, but I don't think it's been described before to the others. So, Virla, if you want to describe the way you think your your room looks. Yeah, so uh, in one of the lower decks of the Paraspora, there's this room that's kind of been cordoned off. Not cordoned off, it's, it, it's just any other room, like any other regular quarters, except the entire space is filled with racks of uh, and rows and rows of um, these uh, glass spherical orbs that kind of shift and clink as, um, as the Paraspora moves along. Each of those orbs is etched with various runes and symbols uh, that currently lay dormant. There were labels um, that have since, you know, either fallen off or been lost uh, over time, in which the, uh, where they used to be sort of well organized and kept uh, are just kind of all over the place. Some of them kind of lie in boxes, uh, others roll around loosely in, in racks, um, many of them not even put in their original spot. Uh, Virla goes uh, and essentially his 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 process of research essentially involves him opening up a, a plate on his chest in which it reveals along with the mechanical uh, along with his in- mechanical internals is a um is a slot that is dedicated for for these data spheres as I will now coin the term. <laughs> Uh, and this is essentially, I guess, the equivalent of external memory storage, in which Virla would switch these out, uh, depending on whether uh, a sphere has reached its own data capacity, or if he feels that um, a particularly memorable event should have its own sphere. Upon, you know, upon being discovered, Virla has lost uh, of his own internal memory a lot of what has been learned, you know, over over the years. And in addition, he found that his collection has been raided by some amount and so there's there there is a good amount of uh, memory of memory that's missing but what he does have he he will Wolf. proceed to sort of scrub through various spheres taking them in and out and try and find anything pertaining to either either monks of of some sort of practice that have innate spell casting abilities greater than uh, what he perceives normal monks to be yeah that'll be the focus of his research Cool. Go ahead and roll me Arcana. I guess, like, roll a history check. Sure. Yeah. I assume those are probably the same for you, actually. So. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, a natural 17 plus 7 gives me a 24. Ooh. 24. Uh, totally. So Giggity. you begin research into monks, specifically people of monastic tradition that harness their own life energy, different from spellcasters who draw their energy from the weave. Monks do not do that. Monks uh, harness their own internal energy key to accomplish feats. There are monks who are spellcasters who can use their key to trigger the weave. Disciples of the elements, very well, very well documented they do that, but it's not very efficient. (laughs) Uh, And there's nothing you can find that says like they're necessarily, there's no reason they would be, they're still using key. It's just kind of like triggering the weave. So are they, is that the reason they, like, would they be better at spell jamming uncertain you 
do stumble upon, there are very few cultural monoliths in terms of relating to races in this planescape. There's not like a cultural monolith of dwarves or whatnot, uh, but one of the few is the Gitzerai, cousin or perhaps brother race to the Gith, depending on who you ask. They are a monastic, disciplined people. They number relatively small. There's, there's quite a few of them, not on the scale like humans in the multiverse. They make their home in Limbo, where they use their force of will to make the churning chaos bend to their own their own whims uh, and they build their fortress monasteries with the power of their mind (laughs) interesting they are a monastic people who uh seem to be able to exhibit great force of will to bend space and time uh granted only happens in limbo but it also seems like they can kind of like affect others like they they can reach into limbo to affect stuff sometimes and they have powerful psionics which is their 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 mental abilities uh, which they can use to duplicate spell casting in some ways. So perhaps it be, could be related to that. I'd say with a 24, that's an eight hours of research. That's pretty good. Maybe with more time, you could learn more. But uh, one, one question that I do have, uh, are there any Gitsari that yes. are known to manifest astral arms, uh, similar to how Kiana does it? Uh, you don't find any record of the astral arms, but... Things manifest in all different ways. Who's to say that just because they don't have spectral arms, they're not manifesting their own own psionics into physical uh, reinforcement to their to their own fists and bodies? I'm sorry, but, uh, does this include any details about like what yeah, Gitzerai look ask like? That as well. Because yeah, Virla would learn uh, Gitzerai are humanoid. I'd say I'd say it's like a pretty like obscure piece of information uh, to know like their full history. But yeah. uh, 24 definitely will tell you what they look like, which is very similar to the, the Githyanki as well. They look humanoid. Okay. They are humanoid in build, maybe on the taller side. They are. They tend to be like very, uh, especially the Githyanki because they're so disciplined and their you know their bodies are temples, literally to they believe to their minds. They tend to be like very like rail thin. Uh, they have like yellowish skin like no nose uh they'll have they have pointed ears and the gizzerai tend to dress very simply they have tend to be just like open robes for the most part they're you know yellow skinned humanoids pointy eared okay so yeah so they, they resemble githyanki who virla does uh know what they look like visually uh-huh. yes they look they look just like githyanki githyanki are way more like war bandy so whereas gizzerai are very downplayed githyanki tend to be like uh, mismatched armor, like war paints, mohawks, and like long hair. Like they're they're very like metal. I'll put this uh, in my notes. So it's Yankee mm. rad as hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Album cover. When when Virla goes to relieve Kiana of, of her post, um, he will go and pinch her nose. <laughs> what? D- does he feel a uh, nose? Uh, what's up? <laughs> she has a nose. Okay. What's going on? Got your nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will. I will then just wait for her to get up, and then I'll just sit down with no explanation. Yeah, I'll, I'll go like take a nap or something. <laughs> um, okay, that is his own comprehensive uh, experiment to determine that she's probably not Gitzera. You awesome. Love to hear it. Um, cool. You take over. Uh, yeah, uh, Kiana, go ahead and roll me a perception check for your eight hours in the uh, the helm. Oh, uh, 14. I rolled another 10. All good on the Sea of Stars. Virla, you're able to take awesome. over. Essentially, this is going to be like three rounds of shifts. Kiana, if like you wanted to sleep now, you could. If you wanted to stay up and then sleep later, someone else would have to take the helm after Virla. But I'll sleep now. Okay, cool. Kiana, you go to sleep. Finvar and Danny, what are you guys going to be up to? Uh, yeah, so Danny's just sort of doing her usual walk about the ship, make sure everything's working. But uh, I'll use some of my time. Uh, you know, Danny's an artificer, and that comes with several infusions, and since we leveled up last episode, I get to add another one, uh, to active items, so (laughs) I'd like to spend my time, um, turning my, my goggles into a, uh, a mind sharpener, uh, so adding that infusion to them, so Danny sort of, like, hunkers down in, like, I imagine it looks like a boiler room, but wherever the guts of the ship are that she's just strung up a a hammock between two definitely load-bearing pipes that shouldn't have a hammock on them, and just has, like, tools scattered over the grounds, and she'll, like, sit cross-legged on the floor and start working on infusing her goggles to be a little bit, uh, fun and funky. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, Finn, what are you gonna be up to? Finbar is also going to do something related to hitting second-level druid. He's going to, uh, sit 
through uh, uh, sort of his possessions from home. He's being a, a little homesick. Um, oh. And he's going to uh, sort of, uh, in the back of his mind, start uh, charting his memory of the stars. He's like, okay, we're here. Um, and we've been to a couple of places since then. City of Brass, uh, Feywild, uh, Sigil. Um, and he starts making a star map. Um, essentially. Very, very cool. Not for nothing, but uh, I, this is a class ability for you, um, and it is needed for accomplishing your star's druid powers, but uh, star maps are also highly sought after. The The fact that you guys have a navigation device for the, the Astral Sea is that the spell jamming helm is like the most expensive thing on your ship, but the navigation, which was put in by Otto for you guys, the ship was found, is definitely like a close second it's not a small piece of arcana tech maps of the astral sea and locations of colored pools which are how everyone gets everything done think hyper hyperspace routes <laughs> in star wars yeah level of importance <laughs> are highly sought after so this is not a small feat to be intelligent enough and skilled enough to create a map and then also to keep track of places you've been it's a it's a small stone tablet with uh tiny holes and he kind of drills in a hole for a specific location um and it, it, it's kind of uh it looks more of a cube than an actual flat tablet um so you, you rotate it uh, in order to you know pinpoint your location and uh determine your direction um and then when he goes to relieve uh the next person off the shift he will um sort of correlate what he's built, which is very crude, and sort of update and refine it with uh, some of the instruments on uh, the helm. Yeah, your pixies are super interested in it as you create it. They keep like putting their little fingers through the holes <laughs> as you drill them. It, 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 it's not done. And one of them like gets a whole fist through and then gets it stuck. And the uh, then I have like, to go into the kitchen. Like, pull I gotta get grease, it pull it out. Yeah, you, yeah, you kind of like butter up her arm to slide it out. Uh, you finish, uh, and they all like rest. They all come up on your back and like rest on your shoulders and like look over, and you hear just it's it's more twinkling. Uh, than any other like real speech, but the the unmistakable ooh ah <laughs> uh, even That's from adorable. these troop fairies. Can I get before you go to relieve at the helm, Virla? Can I get a perception check from you? Okay, uh, eleven. The uh, goes by without issue. Hmm. Cool. <laughs> Finn, you want to go? You go and take over. Uh, yeah. Virla, uh, you can either power down for eight hours if you'd like, or uh, stay up. You haven't pushed exhaustion because. You just did eight hours. But if you want to sleep, uh, sleep. It's always up to you. Kiana, you awaken. And uh, Finn, you take over for the uh, final leg of the journey. Could I get a perception check from you, Finbar? Uh, yes. Not nah, great. Okay, that's a uh, 12. <laughs> it's it's really just a case of not are you going to see it, but how long until you oh, see no. it. Oh, yeah. no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. You, eyes on the stars. So you uh, are, like, very preoccupied with uh, your new your sphere, uh, your, your new cube, and like kind of like going over and shifting and how the light peers through the holes to like shine lights down like your uh, like projector style, uh, looking at like stars. Uh, one of your pixies tugs on a little bit of fur on your chin. What? Hey, what's going on? Hey, whoa, stop that. You see it turns, flies around your head and then to- turns and points out off the port side. And clearly it has been here for like, it's, you're not seeing this way off in the distance. It's like close cool. and like, traveling past you at this point because you, uh-huh. you oh, no. uh, didn't <laughs> see it coming um, oh. you see a small ship it actually bears somewhat of resemblance to uh the paraspora uh, much smaller oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, darker oh, no. color not the rich rosy like mahogany wood similarly it has those three smaller masts with sails of dark folded metal encrusted with like little gems the space here is huge more than it's more than a thousand feet away but it appears to be another spell jammer, a small one, a skiff. There's like a couple figures walking back and forth on it. You want to roll me like a history or a con check? Ooh. Is it, is it? Uh, this is a solid five. Um, <laughs> unclear. Oh, I, Good. I turn to the pixie. I'm like, I ain't never seen nothing like that. What's going on? <laughs> a little tinkling I shrug. The of this. Uh, and then it flies up your sleeve Aww. and back into your jacket. <laughs> I might as well wake everybody up. All right, let's see what's going on. Yeah. You said there's like a um, message sending stones. Yeah. In... Danny built like so. sending stones into the ship to essentially function like an intercom system. 
I go, uh, uh da- Danny, we got a company what, up here. What? What? Uh, like, good uh, get, company get, get, or bad get company? Get everybody up. All right, all right. Yo, everybody, wake up! It's time to wake up! And I just shout at the sending stuff. It's like, it's like, my yeah, ear was right there, Danny. <laughs> My ear was right there. <laughs> uh, you all uh, make your way to the upper deck of the ship to look out uh, at what Finbar has uh, pointed Vira out. Kiana's not going to know anything about this, but uh, Virla. Of course not, no. <laughs> Virla or Danny, or both of you, if you'd like, if you want to make uh, history checks for mm-hmm. me. Oh, I would I would <laughs> absolutely love to. Five. Please. Oh, uh, Eleven. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Eleven, actually, I would say as a experienced sailor that's actually enough you were just thinking about uh something similar to this uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> i knew it not 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 certain and no one else might maybe none of the other ones have even though they've heard of it have never seen it so it doesn't click but virla you have seen not something this small but a ship much larger uh what you see out there is definitely gith yankee oh yeah prepare for combat what we what we are to what? be boarded but it's so tiny. Well, they are not to be trusted. They are not to be oh. underestimated. Who, who's huh. not to be what now? Yeah, what's going on? The ship that is riding alongside us bears an eerie resemblance to one that I have seen before. As do the members on it. I'm, I'm, Virla is on edge. Huh. Virla does not um, like this at all. Uh, so far, you and the ship are passing each other, and it's basically at your level now. It's like a port side, like more like probably like fifteen hundred feet out. But you can even from this distance, you can definitely see now the heads of the like yellow, the yellow skinned. One of them has like a huge mohawk. Uh, another like a shock of like straight sticky uppy hair. One completely shaved bald. Three of them like one is like hanging on the rigging, and another sitting at the helm. Third just like standing near the bow, clearly like appraising you guys. All right, here we go. They're not making any moves towards the ship currently. They're just yeah. They might just go past us. Just sailing. Past. I think we gotta look scary. So Danny's gonna summon the uh, arcane can- uh, eldritch. <laughs> I always say the wrong thing. Eldritch cannon. Cool. Um, we'll do. <laughs> yep. We'll do. Uh, we'll do a flamethrower this time. The eldritch cannon. Tiny or small, so it's it's sta- standing on its own on its little chicken feet on the side of the ship. I'm just gonna put like a, a leg up <laughs> on the railing. Arm is on the cannon. Gonna, is that gonna make us look intimidating? <laughs> I'm trying to look scary. <laughs> I'm trying to look like too Roll much trouble. Roll an intimidation oh. check. Roll an intimidation check, Danny. Mm, my plus zero. So this is a straight roll. Oh, but it's a natural 19. <laughs> oh, Whoa. okay. 19 Whoa. is pretty good. They're really far away, so it's yeah. hard to judge any reaction. But just trying uh, to look. This unhinged. is an arcane cannon that climbed up on the deck. <laughs> Finbar, uh, you, you, uh, the gauntlets go on. Uh, are you just gonna stay in the helm and just keep sailing? They're not attacking, so I'm just like, um, putting my foot on the gas slowly, not to draw, <laughs> you know, any attention, just inch away. Uh, yeah, so you slowly continue on, uh, like, you, there's no reason to change course anyway, you're on course, but being very cognizant to be like, okay, we, you don't see us, we don't see, you. like, we're just, nothing's affecting, <laughs> we're just continuing on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw a friend in the hallway, but I didn't uh, show that I noticed them, so I'm going to pretend <laughs> I haven't noticed them, and then maybe they'll say something to me, uh, and it won't Ooh. be awkward. <laughs> Just continue moving on. They meet to your ship on level, cross paths, and then out past. With an 11, I don't think there's any kind of like recollection from Virla as to why other than they didn't, they weren't interested, the small group, they weren't interested this time, but... Could I roll maybe like, I know they're far away, but maybe their body language is real expressive and an insight check would help. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me. I'm going to say it's so far away you have trouble seeing, so roll me an insight check at disadvantage. Oh, okay. One second. I believe there's actually <laughs> rules for something being so far oh. away with uh, penalty to checks. Well, uh, I rolled a six and then I rolled a three, so that's a total of ten. <laughs> yeah, hard to hard to read. They are stoic and they're far away. Okay. Neat. You guys know I actually speak Gith. Nope. I do. <laughs> yeah, Vila left a, like, Gith for Dummies book on the ship when we were first fixing it up and I, like, skimmed <laughs> through and I speak it now. <laughs> 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 you speak I not do, I, I speak canon. Canon. <laughs> oh, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It just seems this like relevant. Surprise. So, do you think? Do you think <laughs> no, Virla has had uh, 
was has had like fairly. interactions with Gif, maybe in a uh, in City of Brass and stuff like that before. The Gif Gif Yankee are not. Um, they are they are the interstellar pirate. They are the pirates on the uh, on the astral sea. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. take what they can, burn the rest. But Gith Zerai, who also speak the same language, are tend to be hermits, but are far more reasonable to discuss with. So, you think Danny has had like is it, is this something Danny picked up just out of pure like had to seek out the resources and was like, oh, I just want to know like just for yeah, sake. Yeah, I out. think it or is. Or do you um, think there's like some Gith Yankee or Gith Zerai in the past that she learned? I think the from? reason I picked it is because it's uh, my background is a guild merchant, and you get a language with that, and I was just like, oh, Gith, they're on the astral sea. Uh, but to kind of make it make sense, I imagine that it might have been like <laughs> a, a random ship that came into the heap and was there for a while that she was working on. Maybe had a gift crewman or something. And they would have chatted. O- although, so you picked up a very specific yeah, accent. Like a... <laughs> there are, of course, there are of course defectors from uh, from both uh, factions. Again, most civilizations out here you don't paint with a wide brush. Uh, but the Githyanki and the Gizari are very have very specific. They're one of the youngest races. Um, if you, so you want to know uh, how so they, to like very specific origin. get into the fixing spell jammers industry, they're good people to be able to talk to. So <laughs> I thought it might be useful. Their astral ships are numerous uh, and they, yeah, they do make them themselves. So that is, that is definitely something that uh, perhaps even looking uh, at old like writings on taking care of these ships uh, found some stuff that's specifically in GIF. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to stick to my guns. It was gift for dummies. It was left on the ship like a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to kill that. You have that. no <laughs> accent. Mark, actually, you uh, have the, the weirdest Mark accent. The is the, episode two is the first character death. Uh, most of the gift words she does know are actually just par- parts of the ship. Yeah. It's just Duolingo. Oh. Yeah. Get, du- Duolingo. It's like Duolingo. The how all I know in Spanish is how to order a hamburger with only yes, cheese exactly. and how to give directions to a exactly. taxi. Exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. And ask where the mm-hmm. library is. Everyone needs to know where the library is. Mm-hmm. I've never been to a library. Um, <laughs> you guys, uh, su- the situation uh, does not escalate, and you draw near to your uh, destination. On that note, I think it's a good time to take a break. We'll be right back. Rolling with Difficulty. Hi, I'm Austin, and you're listening to Rolling with Difficulty, a D&D podcast. Now, back to the show. Rolling with Difficulty. And with that, we're back. Finbar, at the helm, you approach the colored pool. You seek a ring of uh, ruby red surrounding the black abyss with uh, the water pouring down. You approach, and the helm of the ship crosses and then tips down. For a moment, that feeling of falling and then sudden rising and darkness. The first thing you feel is the heat. Even through the protective shield, which protected the ship in the elemental plane of fire, this unnatural, sticky warmth presses, makes you feel claustrophobic, seems to sap at your very strength. That's the first thing you notice, quickly followed by the smell. Rotten and foul, acrid, like there is metal in the air. As your eyes adjust, you see that it is not pitch black, but rather that you are in a cave. Jagged obsidian walls pressing close to the ship, threatening to scrape at her many masts, leaving barely enough room for you to pass through, faintly illuminating the walls a red glow that must be the exit. Finbar, you guide the ship, gently easing it through this cavern, past razor-sharp rock edges that run with rivulets of dark red liquid. As near the end, you see something scrawled, writ upon the rock, uh, scratched there, whether by tools or weapons or fingernails, it's impossible to say. Uh, does anyone speak Infernal? Let I do. Check. <laughs> nope. No. But I speak Celestial, so <laughs> if that applies here, let me know. <laughs> or I've sent you uh, the translation. Inviting. W- what does it say? What does it say? Abandoned hope. Oh, huh. Say what you will about hell, but at least they're committed to the aesthetic. Yeah, cheerful. I'm getting the feeling this isn't a very nice place to be. No, nope. well, it's hell. No, it's so. not. It's Y'all, right. uh, just a be careful. Saying in in the material plane to go to hell or damn one to hell. Oh. Yeah, but it's not very nice. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. It's a common. And insult. this is just the first of the hells. 
Oh, there's more. There are nine. <laughs> there's my my. Uh, oh, the fun there's... never ends. <laughs> and we're doing how many episodes this season? <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is gonna be the rest of the season. Plot twist: It's all just oh, descending God. through a furnace from here. Uh, uh, let's reach. not get trapped in here, please. No. <laughs> That's not carceri. You're not gonna get trapped. Reaching the end of the tunnel, you emerge beneath a blood red sky. No sun or moon or stars to speak of. Just an omnipresent glow, uh, obscured in places by noxious clouds of volcanic ash that drift lazily and rise up from various points on the landscape. A ways off, a ball of fire, uh, like a comet, plunges through one of these clouds, collides in the ground, craters, sending bits of blackened brown rock spraying into the air. The landscape around you, barren. In the distance, a river glowing a faint orange, not like the magma pool you emerged from, but something more sinister, cuts across the landscape like a jagged scar. And beyond it, some miles in the distance, shapes of what can only be thousands and thousands marching in legions, armies colliding against each other, a vague sound of battle ever present. And there, not far away, within perhaps a mile's distance, you see two parallel tracks of steel uh, interspersed with wooden slats, the destination that you seek, the location of your quarry. Welcome to Avernus, the first of the Nine Hells. Oh my god, I am so excited for this chain heist. <laughs> I, Sophia, the player, am <laughs> thrilled that this is happening. Uh, and then Danny is having a great time because it's all machines, baby. <laughs> Crew of the I, I, I don't like this at all. <laughs> what would you like to do? Is there, d does Virla feel something uh, upon the implication that machinery and trains are somewhat inherently hellish? Now I'm not going to ask for a role for that, because I think the answer is no. It's not that they're inherently hellish. It's that okay. hell just makes use of them through what means you're unsure. That maybe mm. you can roll an arcana check for if you'd like. But uh, sure, sure, Mechanus sure, yeah. is the plane of lawful neutrality, and that's even yeah. more machine -y. So it's not that they're inherently evil. Inherently lawful, maybe, but not inherently good or bad. Okay, interesting. Oh, my God. You know, I never really thought of that. Like, de devils are of lawful evil, and uh, devils the are existence of... Machinery, uh, me machinery, me machinery, yes. Machinery. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, so that's the wild thing. man Finbar talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, was, that was another thing. He's like, what do they call it? Machinery? Yeah. Machinery. yeah, just like twitches <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> another thing that piqued Fearless interest is that Otto, Otto mentioned something regarding a war. And then, you know, upon entering a, a, an, upon entering the Hells, Virla and the rest of the crew see uh, apparently fighting and clashing armies. Does Virla know anything regarding this? Does this have anything to do with that uh, war against lawful and chaos that uh, those very rude uh, bar patrons <laughs> yeah, mentioned yeah. or something like that? Go ahead and roll. Uh, uh, Arcana. Arcana, sure. Ooh. Uh, natural 14 plus 7 makes 21. Wow. 21. It is a sliver of that great conflict and by far the most bloody. The blood war is the war between lawful evil and chaotic evil, the devils and the demons of the lower planes. It has been going on for longer than the memory of some immortal beings. It stretches past far back beyond even Asmodeus, who is the ruler of the Nine Hells. There are there are older, the Dawn War was a similar conflict between chaotic good and uh, chaotic evil, the Great Eladrin and the demons as well, but this war takes place in the lower planes. It's, it's the conflict between the devils and the demons. The demons spawn endlessly from the plane known as the infinite layers of the abyss. Some of them are souls of people, but others just spawn from the twisted primordial evil that lurks there. They make their way up the river Styx, which is the river you see, into hell, uh, where they hope to spill out into the rest of existence into the rest of the planscape and burn it down. The devils, in all of their evilness, stand for law and do not want to see all of existence burned down because all of existence is where all the mortals live, which is how they get their souls, which is how they get their power. Mm. So, in a selfish interest to protect their own investments, they fight this endless war, pinning devils against demons. It's very difficult for them because when devils die, on other planes, they turn to smoke and are reborn in hell. 
when they die in hell, they are dead. So this is a war where all the demons they kill go back to start, directly to go, and then get to come back. All the devils who die are out of the battle for good, but the devils are far more organized, far more clever than the demons, uh, and they tend to just cut them down like wheat. But demons, even so, are very tricky and dangerous, so some have sought to see it finished, Others think that the best thing to do is just kind of leave it be. Like, these two great forces of evil are currently at each other's throats. Let's just, mm. like, leave that be. Others think that this is, you know, this is the place. Like, some great, very powerful, good beings, beings not of neutrality, believe, like, oh, th like, all our enemies are here. Like, let's go take the fight to them and we'll stamp them out for good. But, yeah, this is, you you intuit correctly, this is one sliver of the ever-present tension that exists in the Planescape, law versus chaos, good versus evil, where no one seems to be on anyone else's side, and uh, this is just the most bloody front. Festive. Awesome. I, th I think Virla is under the same opinion of the sages that it's their bed that they've made, uh, and and them choosing to stubbornly be the way that they are has, has chosen the, um, you know, has led them to kind of be in this, I guess, relatively speaking, eternal stalemate. So... It's a be. very mechanist yeah. opinion to let the, the clockwork function as it does. This is all part of the great wheel, the great design. Mechanist is lawful, and so would ultimately, if it, if it came down to it, probably support hell. They think leaving well enough alone is the best option. I have a question about the practicalities of this train heist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a good um, time for you guys to plan what you would like to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Enough about the well, enough about just, philosophy. Let's get to trains. <laughs> well, it just it occurs to me that like if we drop onto the train, we kind of have to leave the ship behind, and I don't think this is a good place to leave the ship. But oh, I don't know true. if the ship can keep up with the train. Oh my my I guess hmm. What if we stop the train? I mean, that Hello. could probably work. Hmm? I think the train should run. <laughs> As, as intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we know how long it stops for? Does we it know stop? Where it stops. It does have it. There must be a station. You know that it stops at the front because at, at the front of the war, which is Ooh. where it's going. Like we don't want to go there. Otto said. Oh. Um, it may stop before then, but you have there's there doesn't seem. I mean, you guys aren't familiar with trains, but there's not like a station around that like, you don't see one here. So. Okay. Hmm. Mm. Well, option number one, let the train run, try and keep the ship at least going in the same direction as it. Uh, option number two, try and stop the train here so that the ship is already here and that we can make our escape. Uh, option number three, think of an option number three. <laughs> Wouldn't that be it? Think of an option number four. Ooh. Because option three is already to think of an op is already occupied. Hmm. Yeah, I think he's got you there. Uh, that hurts my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Go in style, smoke coming out of the ears. And try to do math that is just counting to four. Uh, would would any of us know how fast a train normally goes? Essentially, would would the spell jammer be able to keep up with it? Yeah. If a train leaving a from Avernus. Oh shit! Oh no! Uh, I knew I should have paid attention you... in fifth grade math. Um, <laughs> Artificer and wizard, yes. go ahead and roll me an insanely high DC to know how fast a train a thing you've never seen would go. Let's mm. call it... If you guys can reason away, you might be able to know that. Tell me what you think, and then I'll, I'll let you roll for it. But Aust uh, Austin isn't thinking about, like, a good way you guys would guess the, how fast the a train only way, goes. Yeah, the only way that Noir could, could reasonably justify it would be if somewhere... There, there is some single obscure data sphere that Virla has in which... <laughs> Uh, he has glimpsed a train once. <laughs> that that could be the okay. only way that he's yeah. Roll me a DC twenty five history noir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair so, enough. Yeah, uh, maybe like look it's like gonna... so obscure. I'm yeah, I'm gonna, gonna guide him on it. Finbar's like this is beyond me. <laughs> but this is doable then, actually, because Virla oh. has pretty good history. Okay. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Ne never mind. Uh, Virla oh, rolled no. a natural eight, so oh, okay. uh, that's I rolled a, it too. That's a, yeah, that's a fifteen. Makes 17. I guess I'm going to try. All right. Go for it, Danny. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Danny is above all else a real um, big fan of the scientific method. And I, I think looking at these tracks <laughs> and knowing roughly like how things go, I would look to see if there's any sort of signs of um, grease or like ash 
or anything that looks like it's maybe being pushed up in a direction. Uh, and I'm just gonna touch the tracks and see, like, do they feel warm? Like, does it feel like maybe a, a train has passed over? You're gonna put your ear to it? This is a stretch, buddy. A yeah. I, 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 go, I, go, I go watch Danny put her head on the tracks, and then I go... Like, knock on it a few <laughs> times, like, gong, gong, gong. I'm like, no. Okay, so you take the ship down, down to the tracks. Uh, 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 what? Off of the, out of the mountain that you were in. You park it nearby, dismount the Danny road. hops off. <laughs> uh, you go and lay your head down on the track. Oh my god. In, in a, an incredible low whiz moment. Um, <laughs> Nine, baby! How fast does it go? <laughs> oh no! Investigation is a solving check. Go ahead and roll me an investigation check. Is this easier or harder than having heard of a train? <laughs> this is, this is, no, this is a stretch. This is definitely a stretch. This, this is such a huge stretch. GC25 also. What Damn. Have, what I'll throw my guidance to on this too. Like, I would oh my love God. for you guys to give me like a good reason to know. I'd love to tell you. I just don't know how <laughs> it would be. I rolled, I shit you not. A natural 19, and I have a plus oh six to God. investigation, so that oh works. You don't even need it. You don't even need it. There we go. Okay. You come down and immediately go to work. Uh, there are, like, mine carts and stuff that exist. Not really, like, in Sigil or anything, but that... No, 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 no. Like, this is not totally alien to you. Like, the idea of a train, an engine that runs along it, definitely... You're not going to find that most places. Like, but, how much weight could uh, these tracks support, and how fast yeah, would it have to move to be going along? You're them? looking. You know, it's you know, it's multiple cars. You're doing some quick calculations in your head. You're like, okay, uh, beautiful you mind thing. Huge it. Dis- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you pull out like a charcoal pencil, and you're doing like calculations on the metal. Mind uh, palace. <laughs> you're like, okay. Uh, you're figuring Danny, out like. Please weight. tell me you got something. Um, Hold on. Uh, you're, you're figuring out like weight of the tracks. Okay, how much weight must this thing be? It's got to be an engine big enough to pull multiple cars. So the cars have got to be several tons each. So you're talking about needing an incredible amount of force. You're doing you're doing some some maths here. You're like, okay, so it's arcane, so it probably doesn't have any problem with uh, actually generating that much force. But how fast could it be going? You take a look at the distance. You're like, okay, there's there's like some bends in the track to go around hills and stuff. And you're like, okay, to prevent it from like flipping off the tracks like how fast could it go with these angles and not eat shit going <laughs> off the tracks this is a good question how, let's see how how many feet per second does a train dm go? please tell me how fast a train could go without eating shit right now <laughs> nor, no, see nor's engine you, you you fucking tickled nor's actual engineering brain to figure out how you would be able to feasibly like tonto yes. this out I... See, I'm safe because I just do math, and this is too physicsy for me. Um, yeah, because you vectors need, you get to... that shit out of here. <laughs> the cursory check after some inve- some things I looked up before. Actually, I'm gonna say it has an engine as powerful as the more powerful Infernal War Machines, so it can go about a hundred feet in a in a round, which is six seconds. Oh Ooh, my goodness. That's bad. That's faster than any of us can pilot the Paraspora. The ship yeah. moves 50, but you can technically dash it by focusing your will. The also, only problem wait. is if you, there's two things. One, you got to be sitting in the helm mm-hmm. to pilot it. Two, you got to use your action to dash it. And three, it's definitely going to cause exhaustion if you do it for too long on some ruling that Austin has to come up with now based on chasing this train. I yeah, no, we're going to need all boots on the ground. You, yeah. Theoretically, oh, you could catch up yeah. to the... Tr- if you hid the ship somewhere and, like, came at it, you could keep up with the train, but that requires someone being in the... It, unless you can, like, anchor it or something to the train, it's going to require someone in the chair using their action the whole time. Also, sorry, um, I thought we could move it a number of feet per round that was five or ten times our, like, highest level. Wouldn't that be 60 uh, now? I think... No, it should be... Oh, oh you're right. Oh, it would be 60. Oh, Correct. Oh. Uh, it's still so, not enough, but it's something, baby. Uh, so if the per aspro yes. is going 60 feet around and the train uh, is going 100 So with a dash, 120 feet around, so you could catch up to We could the slowly train, overtake it, right. Um, and overtake it. But uh, it's pretty clear it's that be... having the having ship keep up with the train for the duration of however long we're in there is probably not going to work. Mm-hmm. There, there Especially because you're probably going to want everyone... Right, like, exactly. Uh, there's also some time at which uh, 
once the once the pilot does suffer exhaustion, there is still some time in which the Paraspora would be parallel to the train because you have to consider the length of the train as well, um, and and whether or not uh, you know in in six seconds. Well, then also you're considering that. Oh, now you're also considering that once that set, once that round starts, the Paraspora is now going at less the speed, and and but the train is still going at the same speed. So that we're not accounting for friction either and air that resistance. Effective length lessons. Oh, no. Yeah, I hate to say it. <laughs> we're not going to talk about friction air resistance. The universe is not. DD universe is not even. We're going to have to derail this thing. <gasps> oh. Okay. Oh, I, hate to say it. Oh. I, I have some thoughts. <laughs> so I'm. So Danny is like crouched in the middle of the tracks, paper in hand. She's like, I have some oh, thoughts. God. <laughs> <laughs> so these are like metal rails, right? Yes. And like the terrain, are we talking like cliffs? Is it more of like a just kind of like craggy rock or what's what's sort of like the general lay of the land here? It's like mostly flat and there's like mountains like kind of like at the edges of mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kind of like the Astral Sea, it's not really, it's sort of, it's a little bit boundless. So like on the horizon there are mountains and it's unclear if you flew at them, if you would ever like reach them. Or if that's just kind of like the edge of the universe here, or the edge of the world here. Here it's mostly flat, there's like hills and stuff. There's some like, there's like a big crater <laughs> a little ways away that clearly was from like a, one of those impacts of the fireball. It's like, it's basically pretty flat. So what we could do is if we curled up a portion of the, tra the track, the train would have to stop, right? Because it can't run if there's no... So we just got to make a barrier, basically. Here's the other thing I'm going to say right now, is that you do know the trains come every couple hours. So yeah. what I'm going to do <laughs> is roll a D4 right now to tell me how long it's going to be until the train comes. And then you guys are going to have that much time to do stuff if depending you, on what you want to do. If you oh, okay. wish to derail the train... We just uh, need to, well, okay, maybe not derail. At least stop <laughs> the yes. train for a little bit to give if, us a window. If you, if, you were, if you were to sever the rails, then obviously, yes, from a distance, the conductor of the train would be able to see from a distance that the rails have been severed and then stop in time. Mm. I do have minor illusion. Ooh. We wouldn't even need to could... actually damage the rails, potentially. I was thinking that we could mask the severed rails to look. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. oh okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're we're, we're going full. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now we wish, we're getting a plan if together. Wish, if we wish to derail the train, then yes. But if you wanted the conductor to safely stop, then yes, I could cast minor illusion. Well, let's see. It, interesting. Uh, I don't think we have it, it, any uh, way of knowing how big of a crew this train is likely to have. AKA, how many people we might need to deal with if they fully stop. The question is, do we damage the tracks or do we damage the train? If we damage the tracks, they might just stop and have to wait for someone to come fix it. If we damage the train, they're going to have to fix their train. And presumably there's someone on there whose job it is to fix it, right? Like that's, I assume there's an equivalent Danny on every mechanical thing that goes around and travels. <laughs> so if... <laughs> Danny from hell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I don't want to meet her. No, I'm good. Yeah. So if we stop the I train. I can barely handle that one. <laughs> by damaging the train, then maybe some of the crew will be tied up in doing that. Um, I've... But if we damage the tracks, they also might need to get out and try and like clear it. Right. So which I might think, mean there are fewer people on the train for us I to deal with when we go in and steal stuff. stuff. I don't. I think I like the illusion idea, but I think that that might be gives us a bigger Give, window giving us, yeah mm. i think i think we want them to well, be distracted with fixing whatever we break you know okay do we, do we wish to go full chaos and actually damage the track and then minor illusion it to look like <laughs> a not damaged track so that the train will not realize the track is damaged and then ram straight into the damaged track presumably derailing the train although we don't know who's on this train and i don't want to go about hurting people that don't need to be hurt um, so I get the impression that in hell, most of the people deserve it, right? <laughs> eh, who can I mean, say? That kind of evil's in their nature, you know. Do they have that kind of general talk that would land you in hell in the first place? <laughs> hmm. All right. 
Uh, well, we should at minimum get Danny off the middle of the tracks before we figure out what to do, please. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, you hear okay. the tracks coming. Definitely Wisdom, baby. Coming. If they yeah, start yeah. rumbling, I'll move. Turns out I rolled 30 seconds on a D4 for number of hours. <laughs> yeah. I have a few spells that uh, could potentially do some damage to metal tracks, so if our only goal is destroy tracks, if we can make that happen. Uh, another option, uh, if we want to destroy tracks. Could we train, use tools instead of magic we might want to save those for getting us in oh, and well, out if you of the, need whatever tools situation. too i do have a crowbar on me and i'll reach into my pocket and pull out a crowbar <laughs> oh of course of course i feel like train tracks are stronger than what a crowbar can do yeah i think they kind of have to be because trains are significantly heavier than mm. crowbars magic it is then okay. i have a few options so here's danny's thoughts we could grease the tracks so that the train goes way too fast and hope that it skids off. But that would require us to place it exactly right, like right at a bend, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Another option would be to... <laughs> I have heat metal, so we can... That's could... an inspired thought, honestly. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if that would work, but I'm going to give you an inspiration just for thinking about casting grease on the tracks. Ooh. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I, my I don't think it would yeah, work, but Austin wants that's to see it really, work. It's really cool. My thought is, like, that. if you put it right in front of a bend in the tracks... When it goes to like, because he had to slow down to go around the bend, they but do, it would have yeah. to stay yes. speeding up then because it would hit the grease. Yes. And then yes. it would go yes. too far forward. Um, you could also but heat. But see, my thought, with that, <laughs> my, my thought would be that the grease would work as lubrication, which would just make it work better, not ah. necessarily prevent it from slowing. Right, but if you're going around a bend, don't you have to slow down so the force, like, isn't centrifugal force that thing so you don't go over the side when you're turning? I haven't taken a physics class in so long. I got my degree in film and TV and then chose to play the mechanic on the ship. Uh <laughs> I hope the physics teachers in the audience are enjoying the homework ideas. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh my God. If a demon train is traveling at 100 oh feet for God. six seconds, being like centrifugal, you know when you're like going around a bend and like you have to go a certain no, no, no. Yeah, speed yeah, yeah. or else you tip over. Like if we if we greased it yes. right before the bend, would they be going too fast and they tip over? Anyway, that's one option. Another option is uh, I could heat the metal and just straight up melt part of the tracks, and that would be destroyed or shatter the train itself, and then maybe like Whoa. bust a wheel, you know, and then it would be fucked. Ah. Uh, those are a few options. Also, I we could hit it with the metal. But <laughs> I think heating the metal or shattering a, f a section of the tracks would probably be the best idea. Oh, oh, I, I have an idea. We shatter oh, no. the connection point between the engine and the rest of the cars so that the Ooh. engine keeps going and only the cars get left behind. <laughs> do, That's, do we know, do we know you, which car the fuel... I assume uh, not the engine. Like our, our, that would be a little weird. Unless the train runs on it, in which case it might make sense to have it near the engine. And then we just wait for the next train to stop when it hits the random cars that are left behind. <laughs> <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> you guys just take the caboose off this one and just wait for the next train. <laughs> <laughs> just move a really big rock onto the tracks, call it a day. Yeah. These are all That's viable, not... viable I methods. I like that idea. Uh, I, I'm kind of into the engine um, away idea because I think that could be fun. <laughs> would we be able to shatter that connection point when it passes us? I don't like to brag, that like a... but I'm a bit of a spell sniper. So if it's a question of hitting a moving target accurately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I like it when you are able to like <laughs> diegetically sneak in. <laughs> what feat did <laughs> Sophia take? Features and traits. <laughs> all right. Here's what's up. I'm going to set a timer for an amount oh, of time no. you guys don't know. This is the amount of time you have to plan. Oh, no. When you guys okay, have okay. your plan, because it's based on the this, amount of the amount of this IRL uh, you know, time, time until the train like, comes. Yes. Right, okay. Yep, it's in real okay. life time, but when you guys tell me you have a plan, the timer stops, and we role play you doing that plan. Like, okay. It's not oh, like okay. I'm going to set like three right. minutes, and you guys are like, i got to get my rolls out. It's just you guys <laughs> figure out, I'm going to set a timer. You guys, you have this long to figure out your plan, um, and then uh, that's when it's like, okay, you have to act or it's gonna, the train's gonna pass you. Okay. If Danny wishes to, if we wish to go with a plan in, wh in, in which Danny would sever a connection between the engine and the rest of the train, only Danny would need to be on the train. The rest of us can hide <laughs> on the paraspora somewhere and then meet up with Danny as as the rest of yeah, the train Yeah, that's, uh, no, down. that's a good point. Um. Mm. 
in it, additionally, we could have it be such that the Paraspora would catch up to the train, enough for at least Danny to hop on, and then the Paraspora could then slow down so that whoever is piloting it would not need to take any levels of exhaustion. Uh, that was not diegetic at all. <laughs> would Danny need to be on the train to sever the connection? I need to be within 60 feet of uh, the point I'm trying mm. to sever. I, I only feet. mention that because I think that is the best way for Danny. So to I could the like connection. squat behind a rock and just wait for it to pass, you know. That is or jump true. off the side of the Paraspora and try and like flying land it. Both uh, sound we're like not great doing that. No, 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 no. <laughs> that looks that that tie the, a rope. The word picture you just painted sounds amazing. <laughs> um, tie a rope to Danny and just let her jump <laughs> jump off the side of the ship. We are not no, doing no, that. She's not doing that. <laughs> and like Tarzan no. swing over the tracks to hit the, <laughs> to fire off. I think the ship. idea severing the engine is a good idea, and it might take them a little time to, so yeah, to realize that's what that, happened. Right? right, and if we can keep the Paraspora close, that would be ideal because that means we can escape quickly. Yeah. So maybe you guys stay on the Paraspora, kind of like up in the distance, and try and stay out of sight, but not you know not too far away. I'll hunker down behind like a, I don't know, there's like rocks on the ground around here I can hide behind probably. Yeah, is there cover? <laughs> there's cover nearby. Like it, it'll be trivially easy for you guys to get to a spot that has boulders from one of like the explosions to hide behind. Is there um, enough cover that we can hide ship, the ship? Okay. The yeah. ship, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. going to take some time. Um, and in fact, you guys should probably, there is the crater. You could try and hide it in the crater. Um, ah. It's going to be like a survival check. To, okay. uh, to, like, to <laughs> okay. skillfully like maneuver and know that it's out of sight. Uh, but that's definitely possible. Uh, a spot that's big enough for any one of you to hide behind just out in the open is trivially easy. You can, right. any, any of you guys okay. can find a rock big enough. I in that, that case, that's I think... the way to do it, then. Okay, then, yeah, let's make the crater our, our staging area. And we, we hide the ship in the crater. We coordinate from the edge of the crater, presumably. And that way we're not leaving you out in the uh, heat... And, okay, okay, I think this might be able to work. I think this is a um, great plan. I think we oh, have God. a first plan. First things first, let's go hide the ship. <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. let's hide the ship first. I'm going to end the timer. Uh -huh. You guys are going, you guys have your plan. Yes, so. yes. Finbar, do you wish to give me uh, controls of the ship? Because I can I can maneuver the ship faster than you can. Um, I'll can go hide it. it. Okay, sure. I'll go hide it, because um, it's a survival road. And I have a decent amount. If we need to move it, it's going to be on the wizard. Finbar is going to hide it, and then in the helm will turn over to Virla to pilot. And then we got to get Danny in place. Danny get... will look for a rock to squat behind that is roughly 60 right. feet from the tracks. I am going to hide along with Danny just in case this turns into punching. <laughs> okay. Girl's You're also night. very fast. If you, like, Kiana. Yeah. Um, Could... Like Danny, <laughs> how how fast can so Danny has thirty feet? Yes. Danny could dash. Oh, Kiana, yeah. e what's your speed, Kiana? Currently forty five per round. Forty five, even halved. So if you like put Danny on your back, for oh. example, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> with her, even halved with your action, bonus action, and movement, that's a hundred thirty five movement down to. <laughs> that'd be down Dang. to like hold on tight. seventy. Hold on tight, Spider like, <laughs> No, we're not doing that. <laughs> We'll or no, wait, 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 no. 67? Six, yeah, 67. I mean, it's pretty, it's marginal. It's basically the same she could dash. But you're going to have a really easy time getting onto the train, Kiana. That's the whole monk's whole thing. Dave yes. might need to make like a skill check. But Finbar is going to take a pinch of dirt, lick it, put it on Danny's head, and cast a long yeah. strider. Oh. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, feel so it tastes like iron, the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, not very Feywild. Fuck it. Actually, uh, I'll do friendly. it at second level. So that's both uh, Danny and uh, uh, Kiana. Kiana's going uh, fucking rocket. <laughs> uh, so wait, what does it do? So for the next hour, your speed is increased by 10 feet. So this includes ho, ho, ho. running, climbing, swimming, uh, flying. So, so if Kiana dashed, she could run at the speed the train was <laughs> 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 Yeah, how fast can Kiana run? Or, like, without long strider? If Kiana is uh, moving, without long strider, uh, I can almost <laughs> keep up with it. If Kiana she can go 55 45 times feet. 3. 165 oh. feet in a round. She's without long gonna, strider, I can still go faster than the train if I do if I use my whole movement. Train if she spends <laughs> all of her, yeah, if she spends all her Parasura. energy in a turn run, <laughs> you can outrun the ship, yes. Okay. Cool. Yay. Cool. 
All but right, of course, so if we need you can to. Only dash for so long before you get exhausted, right? Like, that's. I don't know. Uh, the ship has that benefit. But. <laughs> okay. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> that won't, you won't need to do aerobic that long capacity test. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Oh boy. This uh, is let's now. go hide this ship. This, this really yeah. is how. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Finbar, We're the ship. go ahead and roll me a, a survival check to okay. get this ship nestled in. That's a natural 17. Ooh. Uh, uh, with a total of 24. Ship you feel is pretty easily hidden, but also uh, you're not going to have any problems getting it out. Could I have my two people on the ground roll me a stealth check? Yes. <laughs> 17. The train, and you could probably intuit this, the train is going so fast, it's going to have like a minus five to perception rolls. So you guys... Well, I rolled a 12 total. Okay. 12 total, yeah. Because I rolled a six. Honestly, like, imagine finding someone hiding behind a rock when you're on a train. Like, think of how hard that would be, even if you were looking for someone hiding behind a rock. <laughs> <laughs> you know? A 12 is, mo- is more than sufficient. You feel pretty well. Handy. Phew. Everyone's in place. Think so. So I rolled... One hour oh. Oh. on the D4, oh. uh, which is good because it means the long strider I was gonna is say, going to still be not fade. It also means that it's good you guys didn't have that much setup, so it's not like you ran out of time setting something up. Like if you tried to like destroy the tracks, that might have taken time. The train might have arrived before then. One downside is Kiana. Uh, uh-huh. The air here is hot and oppressive. Danny is resistant to fire, and the other two are within the confines of the ship, which protect mm-hmm. them from the worst of its effects. Uh-huh. Uh, Kiana, for the one hour you are out, I please, I need you to please make me a DC 10 constitution saving throw. Let's choose the die that I like. Come on, Come on Kiana. baby. Oh, huh, 12. Okay. Okay, it, the DC is 10. Okay. <laughs> it's hot, and you can feel you're sweating immediately, but you have a lot of rigorous monk training. You kind of, like, go into your happy place. <laughs> uh, some breathing exercises to keep you from feeling the worst of it. You do not gain a level of exhaustion. Good. That would be bad. <laughs> it's a good thing it's only one hour, because not only would Longstrider have left, you guys would have had to keep making saves. About 60 minutes pass, you hear the off in the distance, the... <laughs> um, and right next to you, little stones begin to skip and shake. I'm going to go ahead and let's move to the uh, roll 20. Ooh, map, map, yes. Map, 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 yes. Map, map, map. Train heist. Map, train map, heist. Map, train map. heist. Train heist. <laughs> oh, that's sick. <laughs> uh, I'll put you guys really close to the front of the train because you guys, I assume, are like, you're basically like holding your action until the train gets close to you. Yeah. Finbar and Virla will hold off on putting you guys on the map for now. Those wouldn't happen to be motorcycles, would they? <laughs> they absolutely would happen to be. Uh, my, I don't my, know what my. a motorcycle is, but it's, oh. a, uh, it's a devil's ride. Oh. <laughs> oh, I told you. I told you we were going to get one. <laughs> what is that? An all-terrain devil's ride? Oh, <laughs> next, to, next to the devil's rides? Yeah, right about, you guys would have to be a little bit ways away to be hidden, but there's like a crag here. I don't know if you can see, but the shadowed area, it makes it so that as the train is passing by, it can't see you because it's coming from the the right and you guys are hidden behind a thing. So Yeah, we might uh, need to be a little closer to it to be within 60 feet for... I see a shadowed area Uh, that's a little up and to the right that we could probably take. Right yeah, now, I think like, you guys could probably be right about right yeah. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Reach myself. Yeah, up. that makes sense. Scooch um, a little closer to cool. the tracks. Yeah, just just nudge a little. In. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to start the initiative tracker, and it's just going to be you guys for now. So <laughs> go ahead, roll your initiative, throw it in the chat. Fantastico, room, will do. And uh, <laughs> I will go ahead and add your turns. Train goes at the end of the initiative. This is going to be a s- slight problem if you don't sever the connection to the engine on the first round. <laughs> no, I got this. The whole life I've okay. been training I, for this. I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't think about that. <laughs> if, if you missed. Alright. The combat begins. The train approaches. Smoke billowing from the smokestack on the front. Instead of the, uh, what uh, we and, you know, as audience members would expect, though, uh, to be the sound, of, you know, the chugga chugga coming from the train. Uh, instead, the entire thing lets out a blood curdling scream uh, like a person <laughs> being burned alive as the train rushes towards but in, in, inhumanly uh, supernaturally loud 
Yeah, there Fake Bar hates trains. There is a front engine, mm-hmm. followed by no. two tr- two cars that are completely covered, a couple doors on each side. The third train car is an open-air platform. It contains, there's like piles of like rope and chains and gears. Uh, there's a crane attached to it, as well as you see two of the Hell Riders that you've, uh, sorry, the Devil Rides that you've seen so far, and something larger, uh, much larger, four-wheeled uh, with like spikes and sides on the front different seats and stuff on the side clearly some sort of like war party machine but you guys have never seen anything like it in the back there is a small enclosed uh, basically caboose so far the only enemies you spy are standing on that open air platform two heavily armored broad shouldered figures they've got like huge chunky plates of mail and over their heads are these golden masks uh, that look like babies like these like cherub kind of what Uh, but they stand at the guard and they're kind of like slowly pacing back and forth carrying huge halberds nope Mm -mm. fun okay cool let's make let's make this quick guys guys we got this the combat begins kiana the train approaches screaming past you what would you like to do we haven't severed the engine yet so i'm gonna hold my action until we do okay so you're waiting to run cool next we come to finn finn with a, a high enough passive perception uh, you can definitely hear the train approaching. I will use my action. No, it's a bonus action to Wild Shape, right? It's an action to Wild Shape, but it might be a bonus action to summon your stars if that's No, yeah. Okay. I will action Wild Shape into an elk. Um, you see this large elk with sort of um, sylvan um, glyphs uh, that loosely resemble stars. I'm like, okay, they're going to need a little bit of help up there. You going to be okay? Uh... Yes. Uh, okay. Because yes. you're you're all way out. Yeah. Keep your eyes and ears out. I need you right here. All right. This cannot. I, you see him. He's, he's like slightly worried. Um. And he's his has his features morph into this elk. Elk. I will start making my way. Uh. Sort of out of line of sight. Obviously, they. You. I don't want to be seen by. Uh. So kind of. Make my way towards uh the train platform. The most stressed out elk okay. I've ever seen. <laughs> elk is making his way downtown. Danny, <laughs> we come to you. The train screaming past. Long strider. You can feel your the tendons and muscles in your legs uh, ready to go. I mean, nothing to do but stick to the plan. Uh, I'm going to cast Shatter as soon as I see the train pass directly in front of me. The point where uh, centered on the connection <laughs> point between the engine and the car. <laughs> Please draw me um, how big that cube is. Yeah, it's uh, so shatter for the audience at home is a um, ten foot radius sphere. So oh. centered. Oh, it's a okay. oh my goodness. Centered on the connection radius. point, it'll also oh, hit the edge of the train uh, cars. So that's like what, like a Constitution saving throw? So it's a Constitution saving throw, and if the thing is um, made of inorganic material, it uh, makes it a disadvantage. Is a DC fifteen? Oh, you're hitting the. Okay, so you're not. Are you severing the 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 engine to the rest of the cars, or you're severing the engine to the rest of the cars? The, uh, I realize I just drew that shape in the wrong right spot. Yeah, come on, yeah, man. Yeah, I was like, okay, because you're leaving behind one of the cars. But. Yes, no, severing the okay, engine cool. and the rest of the cars, centered on the like little connecty John in the middle. Okay. And it has disadvantage um, because it's metal. Okay, it, that has disadvantage. Correct. Uh, what is the DC? Fifteen Constitution. I hope this train has a low constitution. It's got a good concentrate. It, it's got a good. It's got oh, a good constitution, but it it doesn't have a plus seven. Oh, um, phew. What it would have needed to succeed. Oh, so, okay. Um, uh, yeah, this would have so, been bad I mean, if that tra- didn't work. The train does. You do marginal damage to the big things, but because the uh, the connector is not you know huge. Uh, it, it is the connector is a lot easier to break than like if you tried to smash the engine, you know. Yeah, uh, the connector is also so taking almost max damage. damage. Yeah, uh, so it's holy yeah, so. three d eight, uh, and I rolled a seven, a seven, and an eight, so that's gonna be Dang. fourteen plus eight, twenty-two points of thunder damage uh, okay. on the connector. So I rolled. The connector had 17 hit points, which oh, meant there was, my goodness. you should not have succeeded on that. But uh, <laughs> instead, uh, and now I'm going to, sorry, what was the total? It was 22. Uh, 22. 16, 22. Okay. So I'm going to roll a couple other con saves now. Oh, no. uh, these guys have And you guys resistance. hear this too, because Shatter is a loud, ringing 
Uh, just that's crunching a fail. sound effect. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad I made the imp stat block because that guy's dead immediately. <laughs> Um, and then <laughs> nice. the, uh, the other guys. Uh, let's do. These guys have uh, advantage. It's fun to be a walking cannon sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> are, they, are are these the figures that are like in the engine car and the and the and the and the the, 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 the imp was in the engine car, which is gonna keep going now, uh, dragging okay, a big yeah. chunk of metal behind it. So that's they're gonna succeed. So that's twenty two half to eleven for them. <laughs> Doing damage to enemies you can't even see. Um. As, the sh- as soon as the shatter goes off, too, Danny's going to whip around to Kiana and yell, Run for the cars! And then start booking Whoa, it towards okay. you. Use, use <laughs> okay. my 45 feet of movement to... Or my 40 feet of movement to run up to the train car. You have 40 feet of movement? Of oh, right, because of the thing. Right. The train car is going to depart on initiative zero, but for the time being, it's know that it's going to leave, and these other cars are going to slow down. Uh, that being said... They're gonna like they're they've got forward momentum. So Kiana, you're probably wise if you've got a held action to use it to try and get on the train now. Yeah, I'm booking it. Okay, so I currently have 55 feet of movement at walk speed. So let's see if that lets me clear it. Uh, you don't want to attach yourself to the engine. No, you no, want yeah. to attach I yourself wanna, to. I the... want to run straight ahead One, so that we end up lined up with the car and 15, that we just attach, 20, not the engine. 25, 30. Hey, good news. I don't even need to run for this. <laughs> 35. Uh, I'm going to uh, jump and grab onto anything outstretched, uh, any, any like handhold on the outside of the uh, train. There are, so I'm going to say, if you want to try and grab onto something, that's going to be an ability check. The front of the train is now open, so if you want to try to jump into the train, that you oh. can do without an ability yeah? check. But, yeah, let's do that. It's know. same yeah. distance. <laughs> cool. All right, so you both are going to try to jump into the train? Yes. Yes. Cool. Uh, so if you have the movement, go ahead and put yourselves in the train, and this is what you see. You guys, dead sprint. The train starts to pull away from the cars. Uh, You hop in and see a a row of benches uh, along it. Simultaneously, eight figures, uh, purple, tall, (laughs) muscular, purple-skinned men with, like, spiny, like, tentacle beards, uh, each with a halberd in their lap, all turn and immediately look at you. We're going to roll initiative uh, for the bearded... Everyone, please remain calm. This is a routine inspection. <laughs> they have they rolled really well, and like, that's good for us, though. Danny's that means they don't go this actually round. Actually, good because it was just Danny's. So hold on, oh. we're descending. Uh, Danny's turn just passed, so now we're up to. Uh, is it Virla already? Jeez. Yeah, you guys both hop in, Danny, one foot off the train. Uh, Kiana, square up inside the train, and yeah, you see all these motherfuckers. Virla, what will you do? Well, I've already forgotten now. Is is Virla meant to <laughs> Virla is meant to to go alongside the rest of the cars? Yes. Yep. You're gonna pull the ship up. I think was the plan. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah. Sorry, Virla pi- piloting the the Paraspora. Um. So I think what Virla is gonna do is is I wanted to use I wanted to hold my dash action, I suppose, because basically the the way that I'm envisioning it is is um since the trains are still going. Uh, at some momentum uh, to kind of wait until they had cleared the paraspora before Virla would actually start moving it uh, to go alongside it. And then it, and then by that point it would it would basically try and move. He would basically try and pilot it to be to be as as uh, in step with the, the cars as he can. So the train is coming, so I'd say I assume you guys wanted to plan this that you could be as close to the ship as possible. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been the notion. Yeah. If, if Fearless staying in the ship, uh, unless, uh, uh, until the train comes to a stop, then yeah, I think being in the ship would make sense for right now. Yeah, but. yeah, no, yeah. Ver- Verla is pilot, Ver- Verla is basically trying to get to the ship as close to the train as possible so that if, if Verla and, uh, Finbar need to go into the train or if Danny and, uh, Kiana need to come out of the train, that the getaway is there as close to possible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're probably going to gonna go now, then. Uh, yeah, and bring the ship okay, close, and then if you need to there. keep moving, move. Because waiting for something to go wrong is way worse than, uh, you know, getting Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, I, I it was... I, I, I think we're on the same page. I, I just had described it that, in, in a way that made, that was confusing. Virla will use, essentially, his movement and his action to dash for as long as... For as many rounds as, as, as needed. Um, to make sure that the Paraspora stays in step with the with the cars. Okay, so right now you guys are both in the ship? Yep, they're in the ship, and the way that you guys planned it, I'd say you're definitely close enough that 
things are coming together now. So we see two heads pop out from a crevice, an arcane wand extends and shatter. Boom! Pieces of metal go flying. The junction that connected the, the engine to the rest of the train falls down, starts bumping along each wooden slat as the engine just keeps screaming ahead, literally. You two run and jump in. On the sound cue, Finbar uh, shifts into an elk. Virla, you pull up on the armrest, so to speak. There's no like real joystick, you just use your mind. But even so, ascend, and as the train engine can screams past and the rest of the train cars keep going fast, but now starting to lose momentum, uh, we see the sh sails crest and this enormous spell jammer comes and begins to keep stride with the train cars. Perfect. Nice. Absolutely. Cool visual. I love it, guys. Want this fan <laughs> art on my desk by eight. Ki Kiana, you face down eight fiends, literally the legions of hell. But Danny is at your back, and the Paraspera uh, shadow eclipses you, letting you know backup is not far away. What will you do? It does slightly concern me that I am right now between Danny and all the things she's going to want to hit and stuff. But I'm going to compartmentalize that away for now, and I'm going to uh, start with my uh, bonus action to, uh, mm, let's see, I don't think Intimidate's going to help me out. I'll just do the regular Arms of the Astral Self. Nice. Um, okay, cool. Yes. Do you summon... want to stay there? Oh, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm actually going to move. Say so you can hit a lot of people depending on where you stand. It's what ten feet, depending on where you stand. You can hit four people. Right. I'm gonna pop in here, uh, so I'm or I can't quite get perfectly in the middle, but uh, it doesn't yeah. Matter. You can hit them from wherever you stand. Right. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, do my summon for the arms of the astral self. Uh, all four of those guys are gonna need to make a uh, DC 15 Dex saving throw, or take 2d6 of force damage which I will roll now. That is a total of, wait, they're each rolling, so that's yes. a success. Uh, what's the DC? 15. 15, um, another success. Boo. Boo, that's, oop, that's a fail. Yes. One fail, and oh, just barely a success. Okay, well so that one guy takes eight fail. points of force damage. Yeah, it's the guy, right, the purple right next to you is the one who failed. So yeah, you bring your arms together and boom, they explode out. Three of them, clearly battle trained war hardened, but one of them, a fist just comes out and uppercuts, uppercuts right in that nasty beard. Glonk, okay, awesome. Uh, My action is I'm going to- um, Hit him. Yeah, I'm gonna hit the purple guy. Uh, Smack him. I kind of want to make sure none of them can immediately get right up on Danny, but uh, I'm gonna have to, you know, one at a time, there's a lot of these boys, yeah, so let's, uh, let's, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's try and wallop this bad boy. All right, uh, first attack. Uh, man, you'd think I'd be better at remembering how this works by now. Arms of the Astral Self, attack number one. Um, yeah, you get to roll your, uh, your, use your wisdom. Yeah, I know, but I still only rolled a six, so 13. 13 will just hit. Really? Oh, these guys might be scrubs, actually. Okay. Uh, 1d6. is an okay armor class for a, such a low CR. Oh, okay. Okay, that's seven force damage. Boom, a second punch. This guy is on the ropes. If you can hit him again, he's down. Okay, well, for my second attack, I will hit. Oh, that's better. That's a 22 to hit. Another seven points of force damage. Boom, first one down. Hey, okay. You see just Fist Flurry come in, and uh, I assume you're not, you're, are you attacking to kill? Uh, these guys? Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. Cool. <laughs> Kiana isn't really used to seeing any fiends die anywhere. In fact, most of you probably aren't. Uh, typically, when you kill a fiend, uh, their body falls and evaporates into smoke. This one crumples in a lifeless form uh, as the writhing beard slowly stops writhing. Uh, cool. Awesome. All right, that's my bonus action and my action, and we did the movement to get into the, oh wait, no, I technically didn't use... You know what? I think I'm good. I think that's my whole turn. Yeah, I was going to say, if you start running away, other guys are going to hate you. Yeah. <laughs> Finn. Okay, how close is... How close do you want the ship to be, uh, Virla? You're, you're piloting it. I'll say within 30 feet, because Virla knows that that's kind of like a pretty standard range for spell casting if necessary. So, uh, so that the, the... So I guess, actually, now that I think about it, uh, I would say within 20 feet. Um, so that from the edge, uh, Finbar, if casting any spells could get anyone that like along the length of the train uh okay one problem i didn't really think about i am technically size class large now as an elk 
Mm -hmm. Um, uh, huh. kind of fucks with my plan. Mm -hmm. Well, you are your elk, your spry. I don't know if there's an ability for jumping, but I'd say you're probably pretty capable of at least getting there, even if you're not sure if you can get inside or attack or something. Okay. Yeah. What I wanted to do was what I, I wanted to jump yeah, down. Yeah. you want to do? In through the front of the car and sort of barrel through and make myself the distraction so that neither Danny nor Kiana starts taking any hits. Okay. Um, if you use your action to dash, you could do that. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, what's the speed of an elk? 50. Ooh. Oh, fuck. Yeah. If you dash, you can get... Fuck. 50 feet? Uh, you can dash. You can get anywhere you want in that train car. Uh, go ahead and make yourself size class large. Put yourself anywhere you want in that train car. Just know that when you run past people, you're going to get attacks of opportunity. But you you can move through allies. It's just difficult terrain for you. But uh, with 50 feet of movement, that's 100 feet. Yeah, you can jump off. I'm going to say the ship has to fly at least 10 feet up. So I'm going to roll a little uh, fall damage for you. Okay. Holy shit, there's uh, an elk in here now. You take four <laughs> points of falling damage. Uh, okay. And then, Danny, you get slammed to the side Ooh. by a fucking elk that runs here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's really a weird cool. day so for the Red demons is, in this Red train. Red's gonna take an attack <laughs> opportunity on you. Okay, yeah, go for it. It's probably gonna hit. Uh, it's a dirty twenty, yeah. Yeah, that hits. Yeah. That's ten points of slashing damage. Okay, the form drops. Okay, how many hit points did you have as an elk? Uh, I had uh thirteen to start. I took five from falling damage, which left me with eight. Uh, so that's two points off of me. So you're gonna turn okay. back, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Please, Finbar, make me a DC 12 con save. DC 12. Oh, no. Save. Come on, Finbar. Okay. Uh, 15. That succeeds. Uh, so I'm size class medium again. Uh, and I'm like, okay, too many people here. Put yourself whichever square you'd prefer to be in, although I don't know if you have a preference. It's any of these four. That ends your turn? Um... Unless you have a bonus action you want to do because you just you used an action to dash. But you technically would have a bonus action. I think you can summon the starry form with bonus Yeah, action. fuck it. Let's do it. So uh, <laughs> this the the um, elk crashes in through, butts everyone around, um, and sort of lands in the middle of this car. Um, it sort of takes a little bit of damage, um, and it drops uh, in a s cloud of, like, wispy smoke. Um twinkling stars um as you see uh finbar in uh adorned with constellations all over his face shining um and uh some bright lights as i take the form of the chalice Ooh. all right yeah you see on, on his shield you see the the chalice yeah <laughs> fantastic yeah the the constellation slowly connecting with vibrant radiant light uh stark contrast to the sort of red uh, pervasive atmosphere of this place. Fantastic. Channeling the uh, the magics of the cosmos, the, the old magic, somewhat atypical, but no less truly druidic way. Mm -hmm. It's now the bearded devil's turns. Oh boy. Mm. I made a lot of noise. I'm picturing One's just like into attack really big like hey. bearded One dragons, but in flight. armor. You know, like the lizards? Yeah. <laughs> One is going to move here, and then they're all. Fuck Finbar. You got a lot of guys on you. <laughs> Good. I oh, mean, boy. better me than them. Hits on Danny first. Here we go. Rude. Uh, first, he'll attack with the beard. What? Uh, yep, his beard is going to reach out and he's going to yeah, attempt they can to do that. Uh, <laughs> hit you with the beard. God, that's uh, weird. 15 to hit Danny. Uh, that is my AC, but I will use my reaction to cast shield to bring my AC up to 20. Uh -huh. The arcane ward extends from your arm, hey. uh, and the tentacles slither around. Uh, Keep Hilton your face to yourself. With a glaive. I'm gonna shave you, buddy. Uh, an 18 will not will not hit. Because shield is up, correct? Yep. Right. AC we is 20 right. until my next. Well, I guess until next. <laughs> I'm next in the initiative order. These are all the guys. So Kiana attacks at advantage. Beard first. Oh, that's a natural 20 for the hit with the beard. Okay. I mean that'll hit, obviously. That's gonna be 13 points of piercing damage. Ugh. Could you please make a DC 12 constitution saving throw? Sure, let me just mark off the damage. Uh, ooh, that's already bad. Oh, wow, that's really lucky. I rolled a 12 and my con is plus one. Nice. 13. Oh, that man. That succeeds. Uh, that's really big. Glaive coming on you. Yep. Uh, that's bad. That's only going to be a 13 at advantage. Nope. The second guy. Beard. Just dice. 
That is going to hit with a 23. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that hits. Only four points of piercing damage, but please make another constitution saving throw. Okay, just a sec. Oh, whew, 15 total. Another save. Glaive coming in for the hit. Higher is nine advantage. Does a 14 hit? Nope. Fuck, can't land <laughs> any of these glaives. Uh, bam, bam, bam. The beard comes in, catches you off guard, so both get you. But uh, the glaives have to, they have to kind of step back to hit with the glaives. They're too long to like, you know, be, they they can't be as close to you as they need to be to use the beards. And both times your uh, astral arms come in and manage to catch in the crook of the arm and keep the glaives from hitting you. All right, Finn, four guys, so that's eight attacks, four of them at advantage. Oof. There we go. Come on, Finn Bar. First first one is going to be beard at advantage. Uh, That's a 15 to hit. Nope. <laughs> Glaive at advantage. That's a natural twenty. <gasps> okay. Come on. No. <laughs> okay. Hey, I feel like I've either hit, uh, like I've either missed or crit tonight. So. Yeah. Very all or. I rolled a one yeah. on the damage, so that's <laughs> uh, using using the using the rules we use. That means fourteen points of slashing damage. Okay. Could okay. be worse. Could be worse. Yeah. Uh, please yeah. make a Constitution saving throw. Con save. Oh, DC I should have done. I should have. Okay, it's fine. Uh, 12 again, uh, total 15. Okay, you uh, you feel the glaive cut into you, and there is something festering about it. The wound it isn't unnaturally deep, um, and f- you feel like it wants to like continue to tear even after the blade is gone, but the starry light from your uh, your constellation almost seems to like hold the wound, not heal it, but keep it uh, from... Uh, splitting any further. That's the first beard and glaive attack. Uh, second one's coming at advantage. 19 to hit with the beard? Yep, that hits. Oh, okay, oh, make that DC, uh, that is 7 piercing damage and another DC 12 con save. Natural 13 this time. <sighs> okay, the glaive, natural 19 to hit. So the yeah, glaive hits oh my God. with 5 slashing. Okay. DC 12 con save. Oh my god. Is that for every attack, not just the beard? Yep, every single attack has a different effect. Uh, 13 yeah. total. Okay, you succeed. How are you doing hit point wise? I'm at 35. Okay, well that's all the advantage attacks done. Um, okay, okay. Here we're going straight, so straight beard is a 13 to hit. Uh, 13, <laughs> no. No. Uh, second glaive, uh, does a 16 hit? No. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, last beard, that's a natural two. Yeah. Final beard, uh, sorry, final glaive is a 21 to hit. That hits, yes. <gasps> that is 10 In points my... of slashing damage. And please make one more con save for me. Okay. Come on, buddy. Shit. No! It's nine. This time you feel the wound cut into you. This one is deep. At the start of each of your turn, you're going to take 1d10 damage from the wound. This can be staunched with a successful med- medicine check or magical healing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, oh. Okay, but it will be at the start of your turn, which means it'll okay. happen before then. All right, Danny, your shield pr- protects you from the worst of the attack, but you see everyone else. Kiana's getting beat up a little. Finbar is just getting wrecked. There's all slash all around him. Well, this is not great. Uh, hmm. <laughs> So I think Danny is going to uh, summon, of course, our, our old friend, the Eldritch Cannon, this time in its flamethrower form. Oh, boy. Go ahead Tell and... Tell me that's not can, AoE. Can you, can you make an, uh, an Arcana check? Yeah, for I can make an Arcana check. Okay. I don't want to scare you, you out these, of it, but I also don't want to give this to you. you think these free. creatures from hell are resistant or perhaps even immune to fire damage? 18. <laughs> Okay. 18? Uh, yeah, with an 18, yeah, these guys are Im- definitely immune to fire. Oh, okay. You know, th- I'm <laughs> Please just hit it with something. <laughs> something. <laughs> Someone pointed uh, that out. I'm about to be not the most useful person to have around then, uh, but I'll, I'll summon the cannon in its force ballista form instead. Um, okay. 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 Uh, I mean, Kiana did want to see you put if it? she was resistant to fire or not, so... Kiana, I hope you got this, and I'll just directly fire um, at the guy right in front of me, which is um, gonna be at disadvantage because it's a ranged spell attack, uh, and he's standing directly in front of me, but also it's a cannon at point blank, so I'm hopeful that Danny will be able to make this hit happen. (laughs) Uh, That is a 17 to hit. That will hit, even at disadvantage. Yes, alright, let's do this. Where are my d8s? 10 points of force damage, and he gets pushed towards Kiana. 
boom, point blank a cannon. Is it handheld or is it walking around chicken style? It's the handheld version, but there are little chicken feet sticking out the back of it, of course. <laughs> Just like cool. under Danny's cool. arm. Cursed. Um, Yay! You summon this thing, uh, magically uh, constructs itself, and then boom, point blank, there is like black uh, ichor dripping from the chest, uh, from this just concave dent you've put into this thing. If it has bones, you've definitely shattered them. Uh, It slides back into Kiana. Oh, great. Uh, Do you have anything else you'd like to do? You guys got this, right? And then Dandy's gonna duck out of the car and start running along the outside towards the next car. Huh? Okay. Um... (laughs) So the train is still moving. Okay. So this was a question so I actually if had. So you, you want to try to, like, climb up to the top? Yes, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> okay. no. Oh, no. Yeah. So uh, climbing is double movement, but technically it's open here. So I'm going to just let you kind of long stride or you can definitely get up there. So uh, 10 feet. So it's 20 feet of movement uh-huh. to get to the top and then run however far you'd like after that. Cool. I'll go 5, 10, 15, 20. I'll go 20 feet. I'll go my full movement. Danny's got okay. cannon under one arm. Her, uh... Jacket is all buttoned up in battle mode, goggles down, looking like an insane motherfucker on top of this goddamn train. Uh, Virla, you can s- uh, see what's happening. Like you see, you see Danny uh, buck- buckle up the jacket up to her neck, pull down the goggles, uh, and mode. climb up to the top. Uh, you know, you can't really probably see in, but you can uh, into the train car. But uh, you can see through the glass dome of the Praspera. So if there's anything you want to do can attempt something uh, if you want to try anything. What would you like to do? If The, if the train I... is slowing down, so it's only your... I'm going to say for this round, it's only your movement to keep up with the train. Okay. You have an action, and then after that, the train is going to stop. Um, so you, you... This might be different in combat, but you said that, like, the amount of effort that you exert even steering the Prasper means that you can't necessarily cast spells or or you can cast like, you just can't con- it's concentration to steer the ship okay so, okay uh you can cast spells but nothing with concentration i will do this as a bonus action first however uh i i will also be utilizing my new gained level as an order of scribes Ooh. wizard uh Ooh. i will manifest well i will conjure forth uh ah. my awakened spell my, my awakened spell book Ooh. um Oh fucking uh, hell! Yes, and, this is clutch. And as a and as a bonus action, cast manifest mind, which will allow me essentially to have, uh, kind of similar to a familiar, but uh, in, in which I can, uh, I believe, uh, oh, I can't, I can't necessarily see or hear through it. I think you can. You can. Oh, I you can. can see yes, through, hear through okay. it. So you can send this. Uh, and I can, and I can cast and I can cast spells. You can through. cast spells. What? Yes. Yeah. You can send yeah. So I love we this picked the right guy to so pilot the ship. First, I'd love you to describe to me what this looks like. What yes. are your awakened? Awakened yeah, spell so look like? Yeah. So what this what this is is is, act, is essentially this tiny little handheld. It, it's essentially just an astral data sphere, basically that kind of rolls along BB-8 style. <gasps> Hell yeah. Uh, it, it can also fly as well, but for the okay. sake of. What Virla likes is that it, it, it might need to fly to get into the train. <laughs> it just kind right, of yes. just out of the Paraspera. <laughs> I mean, it can move through. Uh, well, it's, so. it's within it's within sixty feet of me, which I believe the interior yeah. of the car is. It so is. The interior of the car is definitely. Just... Within 60. Do you have to conjure it in a place you can see? If in, so, an un- can... unoccupied space of my choice within sixty feet of me. It doesn't oh, say right, you yeah. have to see it. Fucking put it anywhere. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So anywhere, I'll then. just I'll just say that I'll I'll put it. Uh, Go ahead and draw. Yep, perfect. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, Finbar, you are surrounded, and suddenly you see this sphere just uh, materialize uh, and then uh, roll its way over, uh, possessed of uh, bluish uh, arcane light, just rise up out of the bed of the the, uh, the train car and roll towards uh, the unsuspecting barb devil. Oh, it's del- uh, It's so cute. Everybody's got a gimmick now. <laughs> can I? Okay, first question: Can I occupy this space? Um, yep, it's just the a bench. bench. Oh, that, that, yeah, that is a bench. Uh, yeah, you secondly, see the little sphere hops up. Boink. Yeah. Secondly, does this? How many? Would this? Would this line get Finbar? Uh, yeah, definitely would. What uh, kind of damage okay. are you doing? But it's gonna do uh, one, two, three, four. You're gonna get four barb devils if you do that. I'm trying to cast lightning bolt. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Okay. The words of a yeah, man who so does not I, fear death. Um. So I will, 
So at this angle, that allows me to get uh, four of these Barb Devils as well as Finbar. I'll cast Lightning Bolt. Fantastic. Um, you see glyphs uh, light up and then an arcane charge build and fire. Um, oh, uh, I love fin, it. Uh, what's the, it's a deck save. What's the DC? Yeah, uh, 15. Okay, these guys are not good at that, but good. they do have advantage against magical effects. So Boo. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how many. Uh, it's a 19. This, so we got one success. Uh, dirty 22 successes. Oh jeez. Natural 19, three successes. Um, that's cocked. Uh, Jesus Christ, I rolled really good. So every single Boo. one is gonna succeed and take half damage. Okay. Uh, half damage uh, is and okay. still. Well, but Finbar would also need to make a, a deck saving throw as well, I believe. I rolled a so 14, many. I failed. No! You can't do that absorbed <laughs> elements thing, can you? I, I can, yes. And okay. I, I yeah. will absorb okay. elements, though. Oh. I was hoping okay. to okay. Well, lower it even that more, is still, but... I that is still I half of 86. Um, Jesus. 86? Yeah. This yeah. Wizards, man. One of them is cocked. This is great. I don't got to put myself in the line of danger. I can just be a powerhouse. Uh, Okay, so that's 10. That's 10. Uh, 9, 11, 31 points have to 15 points of lightning damage. Oh, they're lucky they saved. You would have smoked every one of these guys who failed. Oh, Uh, my God. Gorgeous. As Mm -hmm. it is, you bring them all down to half. Amazing. Uh, Uh, It ignites flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. Uh, Eve, uh, oh yeah, the, the side of the train's gonna uh, light on fire. Um, uh, yeah, right behind this, uh, the flame's licking at this, the devil that's got the pink spot on him. He doesn't even care, but the lightning sucks. Uh, every single one of these guys, um, has an, uh, an innate resistance to this, and yet, uh, you see every single one of them, uh, take, take this damage, and that, that winded half the contingent. There were eight bearded devils in here, and you just brought half of them down to half it. Oof. Finbar, you good? Nice. <laughs> Finbar. Uh, the train begins to slow down. On its next turn, it will fully stop. Heck yeah. Ooh, fun. Okay. Kiana. All right. Punching time. First attack. Let's let's hit the the red one, who I recall being rather damaged by Danny. Eh. And if I can take this one out, that would be convenient. Uh, oh yeah, he's he's messed up. All right. Attack number one. Hit. Okay. Twenty one to hit. Yeah. All right, let me just make sure you I- You roll good enough, you might you might ice this guy. Okay, well, let me just make sure I remember how much damage I do. All right. Ice him up, Kiana. I'm trying, man. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, sweet, max damage, 10 points. You, is what, 10 is what you needed. Ha! Uh, boom, this guy uh, crumples under your first uh, uh, astral fist. Perfect. All right, and next, uh, little pink guy was also damaged rather significantly by the lightning bolt, so I'm gonna turn around Rats. and use my second attack in my action to try and whack that guy. <laughs> okay, that's a dirty 20 to hit. Yes. Um, at minimum damage, five points of force damage. <laughs> All right, that's still pretty good. This guy's at what red was at before you punched him. All right, then yeah, I'll burn a key to do flurry of blows. Uh, okay. For my bonus action, let me just mark that down. All right, third attack. My rolls are going down by one every time, but that's still a 19 to hit. Yeah, that 19's gonna hit more than hit this guy. All right, D6 plus four. This guy's really okay, that's no, six that's points of damage. Uh, okay, yeah, this guy's, if you land one more blow, this guy's out. Well, let's see, fingers crossed. Come on, Kiana. Ah! Okay, oh, thank God. 14 total. That does hit. <laughs> I rolled a seven. Okay, final one, D6 plus four. Nine points of force damage. Yeah, you punch this guy uh, fully uh, through. Um, the fist comes out into the flames behind him and then the arcane arm tracks back. I think of like the precision of these arms. They're, you know, they're the, the crazy like spine and clawed arms. I think of the precision of these arms as being like, um, Oh, the chairman in Hunter Hunter when he oh. fights. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's my second Hunter Hunter reference tonight. Uh, <laughs> when he just has that like huge astral thing, it just comes with like a giant fist, like the precision just right through this guy and then reels back. This the the astral arms feel no pain. Punching straight through bone does not bother them. Awesome. Now hopefully they don't roll too good next round when they hit me, because I'm at half health. <laughs> Alright, well Yay. they're not rolling at advantage anymore. Oh thank uh, goodness. Finn, you are still surrounded, uh, but these guys, good amount of work was just done on them. 
Cool. Um, let's. Oh, I'm something. sorry. You're gonna take one d10 uh, damage from that wound oh. that bleeds. Uh, seven damage from that. Ooh, Ooh. Good bar. Good bar. Uh, Maybe a little magical, magical healing would be healing good. will staunch the wound. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's have some fun. I am going to do a uh, second level. The chalice works that when you heal someone, you can then heal someone else mm-hmm. within 30 feet of you, I think. Yes. Which um, could be yourself or could be someone else. Yes. It um, can be the same target twice or it can be two different. I, uh, but I just need to double check how every time I heal with a spell, okay, it's going to have to land on me. I will bonus action because I'm, I need my action actually. Um, healing word myself. I'm going to be like, come on, Finbar. Uh, you can't let it get to the girl. Um, and, uh, uh, healing word myself, second level. So that's 2d4 plus 4. Plus your, um, you get something for using the moon touch. Yes. So or that the, is yeah. 10 plus another d4. 12 to me. It's not bad. Alright, starlight knits wo- close the wounds. The chalice sort of pulses. Um, as little motes fly across the room um, and coalesce onto Kiana, she hey. gets a D8 plus four. Uh, hey. That is max. Oh. Um, with twelve. Oh, delightful. Um, and then as an action, Heal. Um, I'm going to hit yellow. Okay. With Leyland. Uh, the sickle plus eight. Not great. Uh, fourteen. Uh, 14 will hit, uh, will hit. Which one are you hitting? The yellow Uh, one. This one. Yes, 14 will hit. Okay, not great. Six, oh, plus the, um, absorb elements. Oh. Mm. Oh, yeah, don't forget your your D6 lightning damage. Fuck them up. Max. Um, so it's, it's five for the weapon damage, uh, six for the lightning damage. Um, and then I need him to make a... Strength save damage. This guy's got a dick hair left. You can. Is there a way? To oh, do damage. Yeah. Then yeah. No. Pixies will come out. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, there it's hard to discriminate the pixies from the starlight coming off of me. Um. And out of nowhere, he kind of feels an extra d6 damage. Uh, three. You got a 50% chance. What did you roll the three? Yeah. Oh, he had four hit points. A four, five, or six would have done it. Oh, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, yeah, you see the pixies come out and pull his beard back and the, uh, distracting him as the sword comes in. Uh, moonlight and lightning blasting from the wound. Dang. Oh, this guy's so close. Can I... I'm not concentrating on anything, am I? Um, I don't think so. No. Favorite foe? <laughs> uh, yes! 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 <laughs> Yes. Roll a d4. I mean, yeah, this guy's gonna die. But Ranger! Yeah. How much is he gonna die? Uh, I mean, I, yes, it'll... you can do that when you successfully hit. Yeah. Oh, um, gorgeous. Uh, cool. End them all. Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, the blade, uh, sinks in. You think he's dead for a moment, but your ranger's intuition, you know exactly where to cut, and a fountain of uh, devil uh, blood streams out as you nick something vital, and, and the body Ugh. slumps. Yeah. Gross. All you right. You guys have knocked down half of these dudes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and check their... Uh, unfortunately, it is now their turn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check um, how smart they are, because that will determine if they try to flank. Minus one intelligence. No. Uh, <laughs> they will attack from where they are. They're, they are good soldiers uh, in one sense, in that they will attack something until they're dead. Okay, so two attacks on Kiana. Come at me, bro. That is... And 18 to hit. 18 will just hit. That is uh, the beard. Oh, come on, bro. Three piercing damage, and please make a DC 12 con save. Ouchies. Okay, let me just... Eh. Ah, no, just nine. The beard gets you... Uh, I rerolled rolled the glaive. The glaive missed, but as the glaive comes down, you dodge. Uh, you go right to the beard as it wraps around your arm Ouch. and pierces. Uh, you feel like a... Uh, from poison entering Aww. your veins. Uh, you are poisoned for one minute. What does that do? While you're poisoned in this way, you cannot regain hit points. Oh, my mind. Yeah, 
the, this is a nasty combo because if they hit with both, then you can't regain hit points. And, and you bleed. the wound yeah. bleeds until you get hit points, which you can't do. Nasty. Yep, these guys are sick. Uh, cool. All the attacks coming at Finbar now. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. Finbar. Six. That's a 17 to hit. Nope. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. Hell, guy. Um, 19 to hit. 19 yeah. hits. Okay, so that's the glaive. So DC 10 con save. Come on, Finbar. Uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, Sorry, 12. DC 12. Uh, that's like a 19. Yeah, sweet. Uh, you take 7 points of slashing damage from that glaive. Next beard comes in. That's gonna miss. Natural 3 is also gonna miss. Final attacks. Uh, natural 18, the beard is gonna hit. And then just the hits. glaive after it is a 15 is gonna miss. So just one more beard hits. 5 piercing damage and make a DC 12 con save. Come on, Finbar. Yeah, uh, 16. Cool. Yeah, uh, the beard uh, grabs onto you, but your giant ancestry uh, fortitude prevents you from feeling any of the uh, adverse effects of the poison. Way to go. Keep it up in that round, guys. <laughs> Holy yeah. cow. Oh, no. uh, woof. Danny, you find yourself on top of a slowing down, but nevertheless very fast train. Yes. Wind blowing your hair. Like, e- the air is like blowing embers out of your hair, like when you blow into a, a cooling fire. That's cool. Very angsty. I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Danny's got her cannon under her arm, and I'm going to first run the uh, 40 feet of movement that I've got. So if I get right up to the edge of the car, these two cars are still connected to each other. Could I, like, jump down and kind of stand, like, straddling the two cars so I could look into either one? Yeah. You want to stand on the, um, I forget what it's called, but the, the junction that yes. holds the two cars yes, together? Yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. Jump down in there. Yoink. Um, it's just, lo- it's just small enough you're not going to take any fall damage. And I see in one car we've got some guys told up. What's in the other car next to me? So I'm, I'm looking past. Uh, I Are they say. open? Is there a door? Oh, okay. Uh, there is a door. It's that silver thing. Oh. Uh, I will reveal the area to you. Yes. Uh, that looks like storage cool. to me. Inside you see... St- Hella storage. There's crates, chests. Uh, there are like weapon racks, barrels. No guys. Take a pick. Or are they on a different layer? Are they hiding? Uh, give me one sec. Oh come on, <laughs> Kiana. Aren't there enough guys? Yeah, we got enough they're guys. On a, they're on a different layer. Ah. Uh, actually, it's a, uh, it's a pit fiend. Uh, what's your <laughs> passive perception? Oh, my passive yes, perception. No my passive perception, you, you want to know? Balrog. My passive perception is a <laughs> nine, old, Austin. Danny has a wisdom <laughs> of nine and a passive perception cool. of nine. <laughs> yeah, there's They're no one They're all in mimics. Here. They're all mimics, oh god. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just a Balrog curled up in the corner, chilling. <laughs> all right, well, so uh, from where I'm standing, is there any way to get into the car, or do I have to call around to the door on the side? Uh, no, you can get in through that door. All right, so I'm going to look back uh, to where Finbar is, and which of the three bearded guys in his car looks the most fucked up? It's going to be either green or orange. All right, so I'll fire off a force ballista shot at a green. Just uh, pow. Okay. See if I can't do a little damage to him. Uh, that's going to be a 17 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Yeah. Uh, not great. That's nine points of force damage, and he's pushed five feet back. Okay. Okay. He's not doing so hot. Boom. Catches him in the back shoulder, unsus- unsuspecting. And I'll just sort of brace against both of the door cars and be like, all right, we got, we got... Oh, wait, that was my bonus action. Hold up. Never mind. I had a whole other action to take. I keep forgetting that once I've summoned the cannon, it's bonus action to fire it. Um, oh, dang. Oh, should I just fuck some stuff up? I guess. Probably. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Every little bit helps. Yeah, I should try a fireball. Mm. <laughs> oh, wait, maybe poison damage will work against these guys. Yeah, that's, I'm doing the math oh. right now. Of what can Danny actually do that isn't fire damage? <laughs> You are so dedicated to the gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so happy. You were like, I do all fire damage. I was like, oh, good. 50% of monsters in D&D are resistant. <laughs> but you know who doesn't? Collateral damage from your teammates. <laughs> Collateral damage to you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you can always, if you're if you're unsure, you can always dodge as an action. Uh, no, 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 never hurt anyone. No, no, no. You know what I'll do? You know what I'll do? <laughs> oh no! So committed to the bit that <laughs> Sophia just has dodge like scratched out. By <laughs> <her>. <laughs> we don't, like, we don't dodge right in now. this household. That's what shields for. Uh, <laughs> I will look to um, <laughs> look to Kiana. Yeah. Huh. Hey! What's up? You fuck him up! And, uh, actually, wait, is she within 30 feet of me? Uh. I'm no. actually out. No. Never mind. No. I don't look to Kiana. I look to Finbar. Oh. And I tell him, yes. <laughs> fuck shit up! And I'm gonna cast Enlarge on Finbar. <laughs> He's now oh, fuck. big. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Finbar swells to, uh, crush the, um, the, uh, uh, the bearded devil next to him. Uh, you see all the pixies uh, with the magic uh, also <laughs> get large, so they're like <laughs> they're like doll size now, um, and their little twinkling voices uh, drastically deepened by the spell. Go, woohoo! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> you do an extra D four of damage on all of your targets' attacks now with your weapons. <laughs> cool. I mean, all all I do is use this D fours. I have like eight of them out right now. <laughs> And uh, Danny will just Fantastic. sort of race between the train cars and end my turn there. Hmm. Okay. Um, you see, uh, you brace one hand on each door and look. Um, the door on this side uh, swings open uh -oh. and you see fire. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. Um, uh, in comes that baby faced, heavily armored Maragon. Oh boy. Uh, they got, yeah, speed of 30, so. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, they're gonna try and shoot you, uh, two are gonna come through and they're both gonna try and shoot you through the window. Uh, I'm gonna say you have, you have, uh, half cover, so go ahead and add, uh, two to your AC nice. for this. It's, it's heavy, so it's gonna go right through the glass. Uh, <laughs> one is really low, uh, but the other is gonna be, uh, 22 to hit. Uh, yeah, that'll hit. If you throw up a shield, will that, I could... if you throw up a shield... I could throw up a shield. Um, I think that will make your you AC 22. 22 will hit. It will hit. Okay. Yeah. Nah, uh, never mind. Nah. I'll just take the hit. It's fine. I haven't been hit yet this fight. So. Okay. Um, you take seven points of piercing damage. Rough. Rough, rough. And also uh, mega make... poison. <laughs> That's poison. No. Um, please make a concentration check, though. Uh, uh, as the yes. one thumps into the metal wall, but another uh, bolt goes right through the glass and catches you. Uh, right in the shoulder, sticking Ooh. out. You had your like shoulder perpendicular, so it's just sticking straight out to the left. Yes, uh, I did not roll high enough to save, but because I am wearing my goggles that are now equipped with the mind sharpener artificer infusion, um, I can expend one of its four charges to succeed on that save instead. So I will be doing that. <laughs> you see, uh, as she. Uh, nearly loses the magic instead the uh goggles uh seem to glow and yeah focus your mind through the pain keeping concentration going finbar stays large <laughs> fuck yeah that's awesome uh <laughs> virla okay uh virla will use his movement to make sure that the prosperous stays um uh yep this is your last turn you have to do that cool um as a bonus action, he will... Oh, well, they were in perfect line for another firebolt, but now... <laughs> Sorry about uh, that. <laughs> I, oh, I mean, uh, yeah, as his bonus action... Uh, also, the train's really on fire. Move. I just want to remind you about the language like, of fire. <laughs> it was... It started it was to you're, you're in hell. This doesn't... Everything work. is on this fire. We are in hell. Well, yeah. when in hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do as the fiendish do. Um, I think. I think being. I, I think using my bonus action to to move uh, the little astral data sphere uh, to the other side of the train car still allows uh, another firebolt in which you can get the remaining. Um, oh, uh, not the another remaining, lightning but, bolt. Yeah. 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 Go for it. Here. Yeah. Yep. You see okay. the sphere roll straight through all these guys and out the wall, and then like, just no one else sees it because it goes outside, but just turn around is just gonna shoot right through the right through oh incredible yep. uh uh so the the remaining uh have to make a dexterity saving throw cool uh let me get a plus something to this dex save plus two uh that's an 18 on one a 
12 at advantage, one of them fails, and <laughs> natural 20 on the last, so Boo. two successes and a fail. Okay. Uh, so 26 to whomever failed, 13. Fuck. And 30, yeah, yeah, okay. 13 half. So this guy had six hit points, and even though he succeeded, <laughs> goes down, fried, uh, the nice. body begins to char. This Gross. one failed, had 15, so he's also going to go down. Nice. Uh, <laughs> this guy was full, and he succeeded, so he's still at he only lost 13, but yeah, uh, another fire. Finbar, you're now flanked by flames uh, and roasting. Oh, they smell. I can't express how bad they smell. <laughs> like burning oil, like burning grease, these things. Uh, Gross. They well, I'm, I'm used to burning. To char. Mm, it's true. Yeah, I guess so. Grease, I hang around I Danny all the time. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> Ouch. I can do this one more time uh, today because I can only uh, cast a spell through my uh, through my Awakened spellbook three times. As many times well, as Christmas bonuses. Ah. You'll be able to leave soon because the train comes to a stop. Kiana. The awesome. train stops underneath you. You catch your feet, uh, oh. subway surfer style. Yeah. All right. Well, there's one guy left within arm's reach of me. So let's just wail on him until he stops being there. Uh, <laughs> attack number one. 15 to hit. Yep. Okay. Five points of force damage. Second attack, 15 again to hit. 15 again to hit. Uh, Five more points of force damage. This die is going in timeout. Stop rolling me once. <laughs> All right. Ooh, uh, shame. Uh, mm, this mm. guy's still doing pretty good. He, this is the first time you've hit him. <sighs> do I want to make it so he can't hit me again, or do I want to just punch him really hard more? Eh. Why not? All right, more chip damage. <sighs> One more key point to use Flurry of Blows. Flurry of Blows. It's technically possible to bring him down, but All very right. unlikely. Got Don't get my hopes up, bro. You got this. <sighs> That's another 15 to hit. They're so close to 20s. Why are they doing this to me? <laughs> All right, d6 plus four. Oh, nine points of force damage. It's a little better. And fourth and final attack. Stop going in the drawer. These dice are really making me look bad today. It's Ooh. okay, we'll end this out in post. Okay. Hey. Uh, <laughs> um, I wish I wish you could crit on 19s and 20s in this version, but no, no, it's a natural 19, which means a uh, adjusted to 26. Someday, baby. Well, Should have been a champion. Mm. Quick right, dip in the hex blade. Eight points of force damage. Eight. Oh, it's so close, but it's not quite enough to bring him down. Dang it. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's that's me done. <laughs> I did all Finn. four of my punches. Uh, your uh, yeah, now giant sized with the Fomorian gauntlets, uh, making your arms like comically huge. <laughs> uh, what would you like to do? I'm gonna whack him. Yes, Finva. <laughs> I'm gonna wreck it. Uh, he's gonna say, uh, you hurt my friends, and just bonk. <laughs> bonk. <laughs> Uh, that's a natural 16. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, total of some high. Add a lot uh, of D4s together. 24. The question is, can you roll high enough to kill this guy in one hit? Uh, we'll see. Okay, so weapon damage first. Uh, 10 total. Um, okay. Swarm damage now is a D6. An extra 3. Okay, yeah. Not quite enough. Oh. oh. Fuck. Well, I, nah, I don't do a whole lot of He's damage. He's so close, too. Bonus action. I don't have another weapon. Uh, I'll, I will healing word Kiana. I can't be healed right now because of the poison. I don't know that. Oh, you're so right. Okay. But the good thing is that you can also uh, you can use your chalice to, chalice to bounce back healing. So even if you spend the spells a lot, you can still uh, do a little healing to yourself. Cool. Uh, I mean, it would have been... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Not... Actually, Kiana, wait, Kiana, please make a, another con save. At the end of your turn, oh. you should have made it. Okay. Let me if just... you succeed, you can be healed. It's my friggin' it's DC con, con save. Okay. Ugh. Nine again. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It would have been a juicy nine hit points. Oof. Uh, but... Nice. Uh, this is a... Chalice. Not great. Six hit points. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, better than zero hit points. Yeah. Um, cool. That's my turn. All right. Beard Devils are going to get one final go. 
<laughs> Mattis, bro. Take All right. Out. Beard, Mrs. Danny. Uh, Kiana. Oh, I was like, what? To do 16 to hit Kiana misses with the glaive. It misses just barely. All right, two attacks on Finlar. Here we go. Uh, that's, uh, Beard is going to miss, and then the glaive is going to be a 21 to hit. Yeah, that hits. That's max damage. That's 12 points of slashing damage. Ah, I'm sorry, down. 13 points. Are you oh, kidding? No. No, Finbar. Wait, sorry. What did you say? 13? 13 points of slashing damage to Finbar. Ah. Yeah. The beard missed, which is good. Uh, this is. There's no. There's not going to be any death saves, but. Ah, uh, crap. Uh, yeah. Can we establish Finbar, whether or not ooh, we actually uh, bought healing potions? I have healing potions. Do not worry. Okay. Okay. I still have okay. mine. I told you so, guys like, you could buy as many, uh, okay. uh, like two each, um, at the price. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. The devil uh, gets a lucky hit through. Um, Finbar, you slump down. Uh, crap. Still huge, but uh, unable to fight back for the time being. I believe the starry form drops as well. No. Uh, I think it would if you go unconscious. Incapacitated yeah. dot. Yep. All right. Well, that's not great. So first things first, I'm gonna bonus action fire at that guy that's flanking Finbar. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. If you hit him, he's out. A uh, dirty twenty to hit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Phew. Boom. Uh, after he uh, he go he puts the glaive in, Finbar goes down, and as he raises it above his head to stab into Finbar for the killing blow, his head just pulps uh, as <laughs> yeah. Fortnite sends his beard flying. Get out of uh, and headless slumps to the ground. Kiana, do you Finbar's got Finbar action. or do I get Finbar? I got him, I got him! All right, and look at her. Just gotta kill this guy first. Look at her around. So this car that I'm... Danny is straddling two cars right now. So the one I just fired into, turning to face the other one, it looks like it's like a storage car of some sort. Do I have any sort of sense of like what's in there besides enemies? Um, yeah, there's crates, there's some barrels, there's racks. You can see like there's weapon racks in the back. It's like everything's like chained down to keep it from sliding around. Okay, because there's this car and then there's one smaller car at the end. And my gut is telling me that by train logic, the fuel is in the small one at the end, and that's what we're here for. So I think I'm going to take the chance on that. I want to climb back on top of the car. Um, okay. Aww. You climb back on top. <coughs> so that's... But if we kill all the enemies, we can take... 10 the feet. Uh, 20 feet, because uh, it's double moving to climb. I was a really... I, I literally don't think I could do any climb. damage to them, because I only <laughs> Fire spells. <laughs> <laughs> so I might as Fair well enough. investigate. Uh, so 20 feet up, and then I'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 over, and I'll just use my action to dash to keep running along the car top. Okay. I get to the edge, and then I still have like 5 feet of movement. I assume I don't have enough movement to jump down into the motorcycle platform. Um, yeah, you're probably going to want to do that on your next turn. Alright, then I will just wait on the edge of the car. Uh, on the rooftop, okay. brace for impact. Yeah, you're just you, momentum is carrying you. It's not like you're at the end of your turn. It's not like you stop and wait six seconds. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is like as the six second round ends, you're building momentum to jump down. Cool. Uh, these guys, let me double check the the Maragon are up. Let me double check their uh, intelligence. Minus two. They're gonna oh. chase you instead of <laughs> oh, thank instead goodness, of going fucked. the way you're going. <laughs> Five, ten, fifteen, so, twenty. Wait, 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 Danny wait. is the bait Five, now. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He just gets to the top of the dash, which means the other wait, guy they, gets the same. They go, they <laughs> they go, go the, through the, the car. They're, they're, they're coming all the yeah. way around. Yeah, yeah, they go. Oh. <laughs> you see, they, I mean, no one sees it because no one's in there, but they both look at each other with these just blank, horrid baby masks, shrug, <laughs> and then just take off running. <laughs> I mean, technically, they didn't see her run above them, so she could have run back. They don't know that. Mm. Uh, you know, it's it's not. Could they have heard her? Idiotic. They would have heard she's... my heavy footfalls of the like, workman's boots hitting the top. Uh, of the metal I already guy. told you the train's really loud. Uh, um, true. And also, they're stupid. Yes, I like to imagine this is just that opening scene from one of the James Bond movies where like they're fighting on top of the train. Danny's just like whips yeah. around. There's the two goons up top, and I'm like, this is exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yep. Adjust the cufflinks. Fearla. Okay. Uh, you um, see one bearded devil still in the train car. Uh, also, uh, if you want to get up and run out of the ship, 
Uh, yes. The ship can I stop now. Yeah, I, I would like to stop the ship. Could I could I position the Paraspora over the second train car so that I can hop essentially between... When I hop off, I could essentially be in between um, Danny and the, the little baby-face peoples. Um, uh, there's definitely some kind of like... I don't know if you're above it for movement, but it's so badass, I'm going to say yes. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, you're, I would say you're, you're out of movement to do that. Like, wherever okay. you land, that's where you are. Come on, be loud. I will, I will then, I, I will then put myself right in front of them. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hello there. I will say, hello, I am Virla. <laughs> I will go and, as I, as I go, give a little hearty pat on the shoulder, uh, cast Shocking Grasp. Ha! Uh, it looks like they're wearing metal, right? I believe they are. I'll, t I'll let you know mechanically. Um, okay. Because uh, I have advantage okay. on the attack roll if they are. It says they're wearing natural armor, but their faces. It also in the lore says that they wear, like, mask of metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that. Uh, let me just double check real quick. There's a metal mask bolted to its head. In the lore, it says that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. this counts. Even sure. Though they have yeah. Natural armor, technically. All right. Melee spell attack. 2d8 lightning damage. If it if if it hits, I'll be attacking the one on the right. So the red one. Okay. Uh, okay. With advantage. These guys are a little oh, harder to hit than the other ones. Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, that's a three. So with advantage, what do I have? That's an eight. Uh, so plus seven. Uh, oh. Fifteen. Fifteen will just miss. <gasps> no. no. Do you have inspiration? Uh, I do not. I do. Can no, I I'm give sorry. my inspiration to Virla? Will I allow transitive inspirations? By way of a pun. Is it a transaction? Um, <laughs> Train That's pretty shocking, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Go for it. Aww. Go Yay. for it. Roll, roll a, what is it? What is a bard's inspiration at this level? A d6 or a d8? At level six? I think it's still a d6. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you roll a one, you succeed, so. I rolled oh. exactly a one. Ha! You succeed. <laughs> Woohoo! I gotta change my dice out or something. <laughs> Um, uh, go ahead and roll, okay. roll your your damage, lightning damage. Yeah, so two d oh, it's a two d eight. Um, no. Oh, that's an eight. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Another, so 13, 13 points of lightning damage. Ooh, yes. Okay. To, to the red one. A shock. Uh, these guys are untouched, so they're still pretty hardy. But is that your turn? Yep. Uh, Does your little spheroid guess... guy get to do anything, or? Actually, yeah. As a bonus action, I will you I will I will move my little spheroid. Uh, 30 feet, which I think should get him just inside yeah, the second car. He can car. go through anything, so you can put him wherever you want. <laughs> he, like, he, he can walk through, through objects. He, oh, he, he can't, can't walk sorry, through walls. Yeah, he can walk through creatures, though. Little cutie. Uh, yeah. He yeah. cannot okay. walk through So walls. he rolls through the doors, though. Sweet, spherical uh, boy. Yeah, cool. Uh, the train is done. Uh, Kiana, it's your turn. You've got one guy left in front of you and a yep. bleeding out Finbar behind. Uh, I gotta take out this guy before I deal with Finbar. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna punch him. No, that's the first time I've rolled badly on this attack. Uh, that's only an 11 to hit. Uh, this guy is clearly, like, maybe more trained than the other ones, because he has uh, held out this entire fight. He's been the one mostly hitting you, and yeah, one fist goes right past his face. Dang it! Dodges All right. with the glaive. Second attack. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. Him up. That's not too bad. Seven points of force damage. Boom. Oh, uh, good. You managed to catch him and bring him down. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, then I'm going to scooch over to Finbar and use my bonus action to give him one of my health potions. Um, I believe it's an action to apply a potion to someone else. What? Boo. Yes. All right, then I guess I'll do that uh, next round. You right? can, yes. Yep. Yeah, I think it's, it's a bonus action to drink one yourself and an uh, action to administer it to someone else. All right. Please, just... um, please make a con save for the poison. Oh, that's right. Okay. There you nice. go. Uh, yeah, the the uh, heat of battle seemingly ends for you at least. Yeah. Um, and you're able to take a moment and uh, whew, shake off the <laughs> worst of the poison effects. Kneel besides the large form of Finbar. Okay. Uh, unless you have a bonus action, Finbar, please make me a death save. Ah! Ah! Come on, Finbar. Here we go. Dun. Come on, come on. Dun. Why are you stressing me out, man? Uh, nat one. Bro! Are you kidding me? That's two fails. Uh, 
oh the my god left upon him is just son of a seeping no. way faster than any wound. It's fine. It's <laughs> All right. fine. No. It's fine. Kian is there. Get it's through fine. the Kiana's combat there. round quickly so I can feed him this potion, please. <laughs> it's fine. She's there. We're good. Oh no. We're good. Austin said he right? was going to kill off a PC in episode two. We just, just we didn't realize which PC. <laughs> you. Danny, it's your go. All right. <gasps> All right. You have no idea what's happening below. All you know is that uh, your wizard is currently faced off with two heavily armored uh, feeds. Yeah, so Danny's she's like just hitting the edge of this train car in her stride. She's going to spin around on her heel. I'm going to use my bonus action to fire off the force ballista at one of the two fiends next to, uh, next to Virla. Okay. Red or blue? Ooh, blue, and it's a natural 20. <laughs> Nice. Ooh. Fuck yeah. Remember, that adds the uh, the max damage. Yes. So the max damage for the Force Ballista is... Which is the thing I need to look at right now, because every time I use this thing, I forget how much damage it is. <laughs> so you're going to do... It's 2d8 plus 19. Yes. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> uh, so that is going to be 28 points of Force damage, and it gets pushed five feet back, which would technically be off the train car. Uh, yeah, he's going to take uh, d6 falling damage. As he goes, he's gonna end up down here. Right. Crap! And <laughs> <Guys! Jeez. laughs> it's their turn! No! It's their turn! You three. Uh, <laughs> minus three. Swear to uh, God. Boom, prone. Uh, this guy's not doing good, though. You really fucked him up. Uh, Danny, what would you. Any actions? Yes. God, I yes. hope that they're stupid enough to just go back after him. <laughs> they are very stupid. They have a I six really intelligence. That's I think that's like as dumb as a wolf. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> okay, suck yeah. it. I'll yell yeah, in that's... primordial. Uh, so turning on my heel and looking back because I still have my movement and my action. So there's the motorcycle car directly in front of me, and then there's the other car behind it. Is is that car covered on top or is it like open in the back, like the caboose? It's covered on top. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna jump down onto the motorcycle car um okay you're gonna take a little bit of that's fine because it's 10 feet. that's fine uh you take three points of falling yeah damage. that's we can take that l uh yeah there's two bikes and a uh i believe it's a uh it's a tormentor hold on <laughs> tormentor yeah two bikes and a tormentor in front of you danny has to like it's called a tormentor holy shit danny has to take a minute to be yeah, like calm down danny vehicle. stay focused on the job you're gonna get that 30 minutes with the motorcycle if you do this right. <laughs> and then um, I will <laughs> charge on past them. So ten yeah, you can move through them. They're not enemies, yeah. they're just So my objects. regular action, uh, I will use my action to dash to get to this last car. Cause it feels like- and hopefully there's nothing the in it. The should be where the fuel is stored, right? So I want to look inside and see if I see the, <laughs> the, d the coins they're looking for. Okay. It's, it's like secretly the big bad is in there and Danny just found like a Balgora or something. <laughs> yeah, the Balrog in the aye, trunk. Aye, 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 aye. Throw open the door. <laughs> um, Damn it! Oh, you see? Oh, no, no, no. That's a that's a. You see a uh, a cage, uh, a lone cage and chest, uh, a figure chained, gaunt, yellowish skin, pointed ears, uh, a faint trace of a mustache, it's good, uh, huh? robes pulled open as it's if good... recently searched and not uh, returned back. Uh, you see a Gethzerai. Captive in the back wait, of this chart. Wait, I speak in it! Back of this chart. <laughs> that ends your turn. With a ridiculous you accent. You can speak Gist on your next turn. Oh, no. <laughs> She's just like the engine? I'll throw open the door. I see the Gith in there. Register these tied up. Do you do you have any fuel coins? I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. No, we'll do that your next yeah, turn. Yeah, we'll do yeah, that yeah. your next turn. Uh, okay, Talking, not a free so action. the Maragon uh, is going to make three attacks with its halberd against uh, no. Finbar. Oh, sorry, against... No! Uh, uh, not against Finbar, no. No, uh, no scaring uh, me like that, man. Virla. Virla. Oh, my God. Virla. Here we go. Three attacks. Yeah. Uh, that's... Oh, crap. The, low, the highest I rolled was a seven. Uh, <laughs> 13 to hit? <gasps> sorry? 13 Does a 13 hit you? It, it would, 13? but I cast reaction for good to, to cast. Yes, shield. shield. Oh, you son This of is bitch. the party right. of well, shield users. the other users. guys get, get up. These these guys are like they can't communicate. They're ranking. They have like no mouths. It's part of their lore. 
they're like rank and file, they are like bodyguard units. So they're they're always going to fight together. Um, okay. So the other guy's going to join his buddy. And Phew. I'm going to roll three more yep. times to see if I can hit the, the squishy wizard. Better <laughs> not. The halberds. Okay, that's better. No. Um, but it's probably still not going to be enough because I think your shield, it's the highest I roll is 17 to hit you. That does hit. My armor class is now effective for okay. 16. Oh. Okay, so I hit once. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Fine. Could be worse. Yeah. Uh, I rolled very high on the damage. It's 13 slashing damage. Oh, no. That's like a third oh, of my no. health. No! <laughs> Wait, oh right, you have more health than me. That's that's fun. They also have a fun... I, I don't think it's going to come up. Uh, they have a fun ability where they can take hits. They're bodyguards. They can take hits for people who get hit near them. But they're not going to take a hit for another bodyguard. So it, doesn't, ah. it didn't really work out for them. <laughs> Mm, okay. <laughs> Where they can like throw themselves if you try and kill the big bad, they can throw themselves in the way to, to die instead. But uh, uh, yeah, these guys are just getting getting whacked. Uh, one gets a lucky cut through your your arcane ward, but for the most part, these guys are just so confused. Blue is not doing great. Uh, red is also hurt, but not by much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is narratively cool. <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna back up. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna back up. Okay. Uh, full thirty feet. Take a take an uh, uh, attack opportunity from both of them. Bro. Yes. Bro. Uh, it's a one and a six. <gasps> yeah. Oh, Does oh, a goodness. twelve hit you? Uh, a twelve will, I believe, because shield uh, ends on my uh, at the beginning of my turn. Is it? Uh, double check, but Bro, if, we if it does, then one will yes. hit. Yes. 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 Roll. Yes. Unless you low roll tonight. Again. Oh my god. Oh man. Yeah. Wait, can I, I cast shield? I how, what, uh, how it's, you can cast, it's just that you won't have a reaction for the rest of the round if you use it on your turn. But yeah, your reaction yeah, okay. comes back at the start of your turn. So you start of my turn, yeah. I'll, I'll shield again. Ooh. And yeah. then, won't okay. it last for the rest of the, the yeah. cycle? Yeah, until the, the, it comes yeah, back it to your last turn? last the whole round now, yes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so uh, I, I, I back up the full 30 feet, which I believe allows me to cast, uh, to, to unfurl, uh, untelescope my... Uh, my cl- my staff of the clock yeah. works yeah. warm, yes. and then the twenty <laughs> foot radius. <laughs> All right, uh, yes. yeah, they're gonna eat this thing. Um, these guys, it's a con save. They're okay at con, and they they're not gonna reach well inside here resistance. and damage Finbar, that, right? Yeah, that, that's the thing. I'm, I, that's the thing, right? Because it's a twenty foot radius. Uh, you um, could put it so that it's like in the air above them. I okay. think he's gonna be just out of range, but yeah. 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 Uh, so I want to. I want to. Yeah. You could. You it. could hit just then. Okay. Pretty. Pretty yeah. trivially. Yeah. Th- uh, this. This, this is. This is it. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna make it a little harder for us to get up and damage him. Um, with advantage, like, that's one save, and then with advantage, uh, that's gonna be both save. Okay. Um. So then half of four d10 piercing damage. That's still my take. We'll see. Seventeen points of piercing damage halved to. Um, Eight. Yeah, it's not quite enough. Uh, Blue is doing real bad, though, as you see the clockwork beetles fully eat into the armor. But now this this thing is up there now. Great. Yes, uh, concentration going. Kiana. Okay, action! Finbar's getting a potion of healing! (laughs) All right, that's 2d4 plus 2. Go ahead. Okay, let me just find my d4s. Ah, come on, man. Six? Eight total. Finbar, from two death saves, magical healing to your body. (laughs) <sighs> okay, awesome. Uh, okay, everything else in uh, this train car is dead, uh, but there is now a swarm of insects between me and getting into the next car. Can I, can I have retroactively placed the sphere in it's, such a way? It's so high like, up. I, yeah. I assume you just want to hit the air and not the train cars. So Yeah, ba- basically. Like, how, how tall is the train car? Um, uh, they're like, I've been counting them as 10 feet. They're probably closer to like 15 feet, but... Okay. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. you could put it in the air, and the bottom of this cloud is just brushing the top of the that's, uh, train that's, car. That's what I was envisioning. Yeah. So like, I guess yeah, if that's... Kiana were to enter the train car, she could she could see. Yeah, like, Kiana could totally like, enter the train car. Right. The edge of the the edge of the insect swarm. But, okay, but I also yeah, really do not. I don't want to leave our squishy wizard up on top of the train, <laughs> alone with two bad guys. <laughs> Just like wedge uh, yourself uh, between the cars. You have, and a, poke you have up a ten foot reach, right? Yes, I'm thinking I could put got, myself on top of the train. If you could climb right up here, outside. you could punch. Right. Uh, I also. You just gotta climb up. 
Uh, Finbar, you're gonna be, you're gonna be good to to heal yourself. Further? Uh, yeah. Has, no. Okay. You did you did good, kid. I got this okay. from here. Awesome. I'm gonna pop up to make sure Viola doesn't die. Just eh. okay. How, what kind Switch of speed? I am. Okay. Uh, I currently. St- oh wait. You know what? If you had the the movement spell on me, it probably dropped. So it's only forty five nope, feet. No, it's concentration. Ha! Fifty five feet. Uh, that's with your. The only reason you can do it, it's 40 feet, and then 10 feet up is 50, which would normally be, uh, you'd add another 10, because climbing is double, but you have the boots of spider climb, so you're able to just make it there. Uh, unfortunately, you did use your action, so there's no punching gonna happen this turn. So my bonus action, I'm gonna dodge. I haven't done that before, but I want to make it harder for these guys to hit me if they choose to. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Definitely, definitely do that. Perfect. They do have, their halberds are long, so you definitely think Uh. they can... Poke you. Finn, you're up. Please heal yourself. <laughs> Eight hit points is not enough hit points. I am very big. You I are still up large. Here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Cool. Um, I'm going to pull out my you cube. You get up from prone. It's... Oh, right. No, yeah. you're right. Mm, it's pretty tough. To make it. You could get up there with an action. Definitely. With an action dash. Action. And I, then it's not worth it. Okay, never mind. If you if you can get to the like over here, you can't. It's be pretty hard to get out the door, but you might be able to get like a line of sight on one of the guys up there. They'd have pretty hefty cover. The the area within the insect swarm is also considered lightly obscured. Ah. Uh. <laughs> uh, I think that just adds to their cover. So it's just it's already three quarters cover. I can't get any better than that. So. Oh yeah, no, there's no way I can hit any of these guys then. Uh, cool. Um, I will do use my last second level spell slot and uh, do a uh, cure wounds on myself. Okay. Yeah, cool. That's uh, pretty pretty that's sweet. It. Devils are done. Danny, you find yourself standing in a Fuck. small, heavily armored, like iron little cart in the back of the caboose. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not fuel. The... <laughs> no, I am not Curious. fuel. Who might I ask are you? Uh, I'm Danny. Where me and my friends are uh, robbing this train to steal like little coins of fuel pellets. You haven't seen any around, have you? I'm sorry. I, when the train stopped, I assumed I was to be killed. Uh, and then when someone else opened the door, I thought it was perhaps to be rescued. Was not expecting to be asked directions. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking for? They're like <laughs> fuel pellets for those like bikes that are out front. Um, you know. The soul coins? Is that what they're called? I I think I know. It doesn't seem like your show. I'm sorry, Gith isn't my first language. I might just be forgetting the word. You know how it is. Is uh, <laughs> Soul coins? Yeah, do you know where they are on this train? This guy's having a weirder day than average, I expect. He looks at you, uh, looks up, says, Cut me down. I will help you how I can. Alright. <laughs> Danny <laughs> <All right. laughs> Danny's got like one like holding the door open, one hand on her cannon, and just like, uh, yeah, this seems like a pretty safe bet. <laughs> Go try and Uh he's all chained up. He's gonna it's gonna take a like a, a hot sec for you well, to Well, like, funny you should say the word hot, because you... I do <laughs> I have a lot of fire spells. Could I like try and like blow torch through some of the chains which is like <laughs> like a like um, a like a produced I mean, you... flame or something? <laughs> Not everyone is heat resistant. Uh, uh, yeah. Like, just trying to melt through. Like, you put, doing damage to the chain is probably a lot faster, but you can certainly try fire damage um, than just trying to, like, melt through it. Uh, but either way, it might take some time. Uh, yeah, what, what, what are you planning to do with your action? What would you like to do? I'll log over to the guy and <laughs> start trying to unchain him. Yeah, I don't really have any better ways to do damage, so I'll just, like, uh, produce flame... Or better yet, I'll stand five feet back and I'll fire a firebolt at the chains. <laughs> Bro. It's cool, go to Yeah, and I'll fire from my multi-tool so I can add my uh, arcane firearm damage to it. Danny doesn't have a lot of tricks. <laughs> Danny's just very good at one thing. I wonder what that feels like. Yeah. Uh, it's 18 points of fire damage to the chain. Uh, roll the hit first. Oh, right. <laughs> Fuck. Come on, man. Oh, okay. Not bad. Gonna be like a 22 to hit. Yeah, that'll smoke one of them holding one of his arrests. Uh, he pulls it free. Okay. The other? Uh, and we'll move on to the next turn as, uh, <laughs> you're dealing with that. The Maragons. Okay, yeah. Cool. One of them's gonna move forward to, uh, confront Virla, and the other is gonna no. spin and attack. 
Yeah. It, it, it is it is difficult terrain within the spheres. It area. is. So. Oh well, this guy can't get there then. Um, so he's gonna take one <laughs> step. Yeah. And realize it's terrible. Turn back and try to hit Kiana too. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Come at me. Disadvantage. Six Dodging. At disadvantage. Six. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah. That's yeah. A they, 10 hit, to hit. Uh, uh, they hit. Three that's times. a eleven to hit. Oh okay. No. Nope. I thought one. That's six. A okay, twelve okay. to hit. Nope. Okay. But they're slowly getting better. Uh, that's a but our aim is to hit. <laughs> that's an eight to hit. Nope. Oh, just the fifteen to hit was the best I ever rolled. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. That's two points I rolled, too low. Okay, so I rolled two on the on the uh, the other dice that don't get counted. I rolled two twenties. I'm dodging every round from now on. <laughs> just <laughs> screw those extra two punches. <laughs> Blades coming through. Uh, uh, whoosh, dodge, whoosh, dodge, whoosh. jump over. Matrix, Matrix lean back. Matrix. Uh, these halberds cannot hit, even with their uh, currently empowered forms. Ah, oh, this feels uh, like it looks really cool. Uh, Virla. Um, oh, Virla, do they take damage again at, on their turn or on your turn? Yeah, at the end of the if they if they end their turn within the spheres area, oh. they have to make another Constitution saving throw or take four d10 piercing damage. Ooh. Uh, advantage, success, and a success. Um, okay. But do they I'm take pretty half sure that? you're gonna kill below. Uh, yeah, they're so gonna take 12. half. What, what did you roll before? Oh, oh shoot, I don't remember. It was I think, 17. Uh, 17. 17 half to eight. Yeah. Yeah. So blue. Yeah, blue takes his attacks. And then um, you see the beetles fully uh, get in there and just shred. Like in the uh, mummy, nineteen ninety nine. Armor. <laughs> yes, a perfect <laughs> horrifying uh, inspiration. <laughs> uh, yeah, shreds. And Virla, you're up. Okay. Um, Virla's just gonna leave that there. <laughs> uh. As his bonus action, first of all, he's going to uh, use his uh, move, move his little guy thirty feet uh, forward. Trundle, trundle, trundle. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and and then Virla will use his movement. I think he can just leave this here. <laughs> it is concentration, but he can just leave it there. The the insect. Yeah. Plague. Why not? Can he uh, move five, ten, and then hop down the hatch and then get into here, uh, into the train car? Clink. Absolutely. Go ahead and drop yourself in the appropriate square. Okay, I'll put that there. Virla would just like to, if, if there's a ch if the the closest box or chest, he'd like to just kind of like, uh, just you know try and crack it open and see what's inside. Yeah, basically everything here is chained down, so you're, uh, you're either gonna have to break uh, it or okay. try to pick the lock. But you uh, can try. Virla will try. Virla will. Yeah, I don't think he has. Uh, Virla will try to break it. Um, he does cool. have a quarter staff, so he. Ah. Will, well, I guess, I, I for flavor, I'll say that he uses the sta uh, the staff of the clock swarm as a quarter. Yeah, staff. <laughs> it, um, yeah, it can function as a quarter staff. You can also cast yeah. a spell if you want to onto it. But uh, what do I what do I have? Um, Careful, things are no, resistant to fire thing. damage here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only the people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I could. Well, I could burning hands it, but nah, I, I think I'll just bonk it with okay. the, with with my staff. Keep it away. Go ahead, um, crack. Yeah, yeah, smack it. That's an eleven. Um, yeah, we'll we'll uh we'll go ahead and say that's <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, you. Is it prone? This padlock uh, can really dodge. <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead. Uh, we'll just using your action, you can smash it open. I'm not going to be a stickler. Oh, okay. Sit here for several uh. rounds, smashing it. <laughs> sure. Damage in. Uh, Take twenty. <laughs> Yeah, it's one thing for freak an ally; it's the other for a potential ally, I guess. Uh, it's another it's to, my boy. to just open a box. Um, <laughs> sure, I've met yeah. This gift. So yeah, you crack open the padlock in here? and look inside. In the crate, yeah, the this metal it. lined crate uh, is lined with <laughs> rows and rows of oh. gold coins, um, maybe about like medallion size. Like they're bigger than gold you'd carry in your pocket, but not by too much. Um, and on one side of them, uh, if you pick one up, is a uh, is a skull, and the other has the like, infernal writing on the back. What does it say? I, I can I can read infernal. Uh, it's not writing. It's more like a uh, a rune. It's a, it's not a word. Um, uh, uh, but go ahead and make an arcana check. Like oh, you sure. you you're a wizard and you speak infernal. So those are the two ingredients you need to, to crack this. Ooh, that's good. Twenty two. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, hey. Yeah, you look at this, and as you pick it up, you feel like a weight. Uh, actually, what alignment is uh, is Virla? Virla, well, he was before before the incident. I would say that he was very much like lawful good. I think now he's trying to go more like true neutral. Like get get a bit of column A, get a bit of column B. See what see true what life had. See see what the plane so has too... in store. With true neutral, it's not too bad, uh, but you certainly feel like it's kind of like a almost like a weight on your shoulders when you pick it up. Like you're lifting the coin not with your hand but with your whole body. This is a rune that that is binding a mortal soul to this metal. Guys, I think these satanic motorbikes might be evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you're able to deduce that uh, by putting a coin. If if these th- if the coins are what runs the bikes and the other machines, uh, yeah. They run on not not coins, but souls with coins. Oh, uh, bound coins. Coins with souls. I'm kind of just yeah. imagining like a kid yeah, riding right? kind of sort of token. I didn't want to be the one to say it. I'm so glad someone else did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little like horse you just hear the, the horrible screaming of a soul being destroyed forever. Do it. Virla's true neutral. Noir is not. Hmm. Uh, that that's your, your, that's uh, his turn. turn Cool. Yep. Uh, Kiana, take, take him story. out. Take right. him out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna smack you this boy. Uh, D D uh, D20 plus seven to hit. Oh my god. Uh, that's a ten because that was a laughably bad roll. Battle miss. Um, a lot of bad rolls tonight. But <laughs> I'll uh, I know. Second attack. Kind of like we're uh. Okay. Rolling with difficult. Nineteen. <laughs> but, um, yeah. <laughs> rolling with we're difficulty. <laughs> Rolling, right. with difficulty. Rolling with difficulty. All right, that's uh, <laughs> and then the six pine. points of force damage. Yeah. All right, six, boom, good, good chunk off this guy. He's in spitting distance. All right, then I will burn my key point to a flurry of blows this bad boy and smack him two more times. Just mark this off. I'm gonna be pretty embarrassed if I miss. Long okay, Kiana. here we go. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, dirty twenty. Yeah. Go ahead, roll your second D6 second to hit as well. Oh, okay. Just roll but it I also once. rolled max damage on that one. Okay, uh, that's a 24 to hit, so uh, I hit both times. And the first attack does 10 points of force damage, and the second attack does 7 points of force damage. Finish him. How does he go down? <laughs> just push um, him. Probably just punch Ooh. through his face. I don't know. <laughs> Boom. The uh, mask is the real mask creepy. The flying off. Uh, there is... They have like a like a dark purplish skin, sort of Thanos style like kind of kind of color skin. Underneath the mask, where there should be a face, is instead a like blank head with like the vague indentations of where an eyes and mouth and nose nope. should be. Mm-hmm. Just featureless. Don't like that. Um, no. Mm-hmm. Which you see for a brief second before the neck twists and cracks and the thing falls down. Oh, I wish I left the mask on. Okay. <laughs> um. So that that's my action, my bonus action. Can I use my movement to drop down you can into use your the to do anything car below? You like combat drops as the final active combatant is removed oh. from the field. Awesome! Congrats, guys. Well, yeah. first of all, so as yeah. I was saying, you know, we were here to steal some soul coins, and Daniel fired the other fireball at the other chain. <laughs> yes, you. Uh, with some time, you're able to free uh, the gets there. I um, pulls down the second wrist. Um, thank you um, for your aid. Uh, I was uh, not expecting anything. I'm certain that this was my, uh, well, the bill had eventually come to you. Yeah, well, honestly, you got pretty lucky that we went with the plan that we did go with because we were gonna just, like, capsize the whole train, so that probably would have fucked you up pretty bad. Bro, you gotta also let him out of the cage. (laughs) (laughs) Capsizing with the train would be preferable to whatever the devils had planned. I'll be open, I'll open the door to the cage. Thank you. We're gonna scooch back into the uh, probably. I, I know I'm at least heading where Danny went just to make sure there's nothing in the later cars. Um, I'm too uh, tired to try to fit in between this door, and I go, Danny, can, <laughs> can you? I. It probably would drop because it only lasts for like a minute anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah it's okay. A, a more than a minute passes. Uh, Keanu, you go join. Point. Um, the gif exits the cage. Yep. Um, gives you a very formal like kind of bow. Uh, goes over to the crate, opens it up, and begins taking out some effects. There's like some wraps. Uh, you see, he pulls out like a like a glittering red scale belt, uh, kind of like a weightlifting belt, but oh, um, fancy. Uh, clips it around and reaffixes the uh, the robes. Uh, extends a hand uh, to you, 
Actually, I would not extend a hand. Handshaking is not a thing. Uh, instead, would like perform ah. the formal <laughs> bow again. Uh, it says, apologies uh, for my haste. I'm called Enoch. Nice to meet you. Uh, and I'll poke a head but out of the like door. you like to be our captain, <laughs> Enoch? Poke a head out the door. <laughs> hey guys, did you find the, um, the soul coins? The what? Yes. You can see that uh, Virla is, is is walking out of the second train car, just holding one of the, oh, holding a box, the, the the crate of soul coins. Wait, they're what now? And I don't I don't really know either. Uh, I made a friend, um, Enoch. Uh, we seems like we found the coins we need. Uh, do you are you like do you need a ride or something? Is, I, the train's not going anywhere anymore. Out of hell. <laughs> um. Uh. Uh. Well, I definitely. Don't want to go where the train was going. Seems to ponder. I would like to meet up with my comrades again, but I have no clue how Can far I... I've traveled or where they might be. <laughs> Can Instead, I make if and you some have sort means of... of escaping <laughs> hell? Okay. I would. I'm starting connect to connect. <laughs> Sophia, the player, is connecting to the Doubly dots that grateful. maybe the gif who didn't attack us earlier might have been missing a person. Can I make some sort of check to see if Danny would connect oh. those dots? <laughs> yeah. Well, make a make it uh, make a make a just make an intelligence check actually for me, not in, not wisdom. Yeah. Make an <laughs> oh my god, check you can't me. just assume that all gifts know each other. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. Yeah. Also, I think these are two different kinds mm, of gifts. Two different kinds. <laughs> there are. Uh, that's a dirty twenty on intelligence. Oh no, yeah, no, those those Danny's were smart. not to mention the ones yeah, on the ship were were uh, Gith this, Yankee. They were. This is a Gith Zerai. Those are Gith mm. Yankee. Uh, heated enemies. Yeah. Don't get along. Ah. Um. Whew, you managed to avoid doing a microaggression. <laughs> um. <laughs> Roll to avoid microaggression. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Well, we're um, going to. He, uh, the he says, city. I would be doubly grateful if you. Yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're going to um City of Brass, and... probably. You drop you off somewhere on the way, or you can just hang out on the ship, honestly. People seem to be doing that a lot lately. I'm kind of experimentally seeing if I can lift one of these motorcycles so we can put it on the ship. Uh, um, no, that Virla, so I probably much. can't. Virla is oh. absolutely going to take a soul coin and, and, and rev up one of these motorcycles. Oh, you know, you know uh, that God. you're doing that. You put a soul coin into one of the, uh, you want to rev up the Tormentor or the Devil Tormentor. Tormentor. The, the, Tormentor. Well, Tormentor. Like, Tormentor. Virla will want to eventually get all of them on the Paraspora. But I guess as a show, uh, well, Virla also doesn't all, know how maybe. long it's gonna take before before we're people not, realize -uh. that the train. No, we're we're not playing with these soul coins. These these are these are people to some extent, aren't they? Uh, they yeah, are. you put one Wait, into the are? bike, and immediately you hear <laughs> like just an, <laughs> an inhuman oh scream as the the motorcycle starts up. And the uh, soul uh, that was in it is being uh, burned for fuel. Hear the scream of Virla. I'm gonna shut off the motorcycle uh, as quickly as I can. I <laughs> yeah, the uh -huh. arm mm -mm. You never know. That could have been the a scream of relief. <laughs> I don't think I like this dimension very much. Should we leave? Hey guys, um, <laughs> uh, oh. we have you a. You see the gift that arrive with Danny at this point. <laughs> Leaving would be wise. Okay, Apologies. all right. Um, let's, let's, Enoch. Let's... Uh, Enoch, this is the oh, gang. Lovely Kiana, to meet you. Virla, Finbar. Kiana, yeah. Hello. So there's people in these coins? The enterprising devilish people have managed to uh, somehow bind the souls of the... I, I suppose they are damned now, but souls within coins and use them as quite literal currency. Um, hmm... Devils, uh, I, I think Virla would know this. Devils use souls as as currency, um, more so even than just like rare rare coins or gems or ores and whatnot. Um, yeah, hmm. it's both a they, currency they and a power source. So, well, I suppose we should yes. uh, bring it. Doesn't feel great. <laughs> I mean, it's what Otto asked us to come get, right? Just load it up on the ship. It sure uh, is. Well, yeah, let's just get them out for the job. Yeah, Put them in a so... safe corner. Nobody's touching these coins. Danny, do there's you all... wish to uh, secure the devil rights? I, I'm going to think, if there's many more of those here, like there might crates. be some way to... Okay, there might be some way to release the souls from the coins that Otto doesn't need, right? I feel like leaving them here doesn't actually help well, them. Well, we just take them all, you know, and then 
give them to Otto and he'll do what he's gonna do with them. Way ahead of you. Well, okay, maybe maybe we don't give the rest to Otto. Maybe we figure out a way to like help him. But I don't know. That feels uh, like it's above my pay grade. It seems to me that using them releases them. That is legitimately what I thought happens. Like I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, it seems like it maybe um, consumes them forever, actually. Yeah, um, that's a pretty good intuition. <laughs> Wh- which one? <laughs> no, Keanu, you're right. Uh, consume them. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, destroys them forever. Enoch, you're a rich and vibrant character who we've run into. Do you know anything about the lore of these soul <laughs> coins? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I am not here for devils. I uh, know little of their wars and how they make make such a thing other than to say if it was fiendish of origin best to put it down before it puts you down so to speak Mm. sounds like we should just do the job that we were told to come do how many how many coins yeah how many coins is Otto asking for just sort of asked for fuel like what what, would a single crate's worth be sufficient and then perhaps we could Uh, save the others there's a lot in a single crate so I mean, you know. Yeah, I th- single crate. It'd probably be good. Th- All right. Yeah. Do you think we would wish to exert effort to figure out a means to somehow um, peacefully release these uh, souls into whatever plane they wish? I feel like that's what I want to do. I don't like leaving them here. Yeah. I also don't like staying here, so I say we skedaddle. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's get whatever <laughs> yeah. we want. We- um, and you see... Finbar put it puts his giant mitts on the uh one of the war bikes. Danny, you want one of these? Yeah. Oh, I want to take one apart so bad. <laughs> okay. Please do. Maybe find a way to make it run on something that isn't as a torture human soul. Can we take the we'll big take one? one of these. Can we yep. please take the big no, one? No, you don't get the big one. No. I don't think uh, we can no. carry the big one. I I could barely carry this one. You see him just yeah. slowly drag it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Robot <laughs> bring it on that car. <laughs> Robot, bring the boat around. There we is gotta, a crane on the go. car. <laughs> yeah. Yes, oh, sir. I, he's, Finbar's not that smart. Come on. Uh, let me know what you guys are going to assume this is done. Very little set out back to the Parasco. Uh, because as Kiana's found out, being outside in this place is bad. Yeah, news, yeah. So. It's bad. Cool. I'm going to start grabbing uh, crates and moving them onto the coins, uh, as well as ship as if I can. Yeah, I was going to say, can we loot the car? What's in here? Roll investigation check. Either two people each go, or Hell one person yeah. who is not as good rolls an advantage. So the the superior person oh, could give Virla good yeah, investigation. Uh, could give the help back. Uh, yeah, Virla has plus. Uh, so either Virla has plus. Right, either Virla rolls. and Danny can each roll, or Danny can roll twice with advantage. Virla giving the help action. That is a that is a natural one. Ooh, so. with a natural oh, eighteen, buddy. that brings yeah. me to twenty-four total. What? What are the toys in Do here, you? dear uh, DM? What have we uh, found? Uh, mostly, <laughs> it is um, soul coins, uh, which I think there's a lot of like repair parts, which Veer like gets distracted looking at. Um, there are weapons of every of basically every make, like short swords, long swords, glaives, all kinds of different weapons here. They are all of fiendish design. They are hellfire weapons. Which are magical. Ooh. Uh, although you don't know what they do uh, without uh, investigating That's kind of cool. Uh, there are, there is a, in the chest in the far corner, um, there is a suit of half plate, dark icy metal. Oh, damn. Um, Does anyone hear wear armor? there are three barrels that seem to contain, contain some sort of, like, gel. Does any of, does the gel remind me at all of any sort of, like, combustion Oh, yeah, it's components? totally, yeah. It's, uh, this is ammunition for something. Do I see anything that looks like it might be the something mm. that it's ammunition yeah, for? Yeah, go ahead and, uh, uh, my roll, me, roll me an investigation. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this some fucking Greek fire shit or whatever? <laughs> no, but a dirty 20. 20. Uh, yeah, there is a, in the Tormentor, Ooh. there is a, uh, a station that's a flamethrower. We are so taking that. We still can't get it on the on the ship. Can I can I like get the flamethrower detached from the tormentor? <laughs> yes. Danny's resistant to fire, so I figure she's just here. out out of the ship. Yeah. How long is it taking yeah, us to load I, stuff? All up? right. I think uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna count. Probably all not this, that long, like, stuff especially if Enoch wants to help out. You want to try to? Um, and again, the, the longer you're here, the the more risk you're running. Uh, 
Uh, that's just intuitive. Yeah. Uh, if you want to try and get it done within the hour, um, you can do a check for that. It'll be pretty hard, but it's definitely doable. It's going to be your Tinker's Tools check. Uh, and okay. otherwise, uh, you can wait and try again, but obviously the longer you're here, the more, more problems you might run into. Um, since we are here for the yeah, hour, I will make the check, the, the difficult one okay. with the tools. Tinker's Tools, so that's intelligence plus, plus proficiency. Yes. To try and get this um, thing off. While everyone else is just moving crates. God, we're... we're um, greedy, yeah. The... I also... No, um, can Finbar notice her try to do this? Be like, okay, just give her what she wants. <laughs> It'll leave her busy on the ship. She won't blow anything else up. Okay. Go <laughs> for it. Yes. My, and oh, since shit, this okay. is a uh, tool that I am able to become proficient with because of my... Uh, right tool for the job... So I have my I have a set of tools because of the multi tool thing, and then I also um, tool expertise. You said this was for what kind of tools? Tinkers. Tinkers tools. Yes, I'm proficient with that, so I'm actually double my <laughs> proficiency oh, bonus Christ. for this. Yeah, you're gonna make this roll. <laughs> oh, she's you're gonna get this. Yeah. Wow. So wow. it was didn't make it difficult enough plus for proficiency bro. bonus. Yeah. So plus, plus D four. Double D4. proficiency. Oh yeah. Bonus. Oh, oh baby, we are gonna install a flamethrower on the Paraspora. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. So that was a natural 17, plus two on the D4, brings us up to 19, plus my intelligence, which is plus oh, three. Boy. So that's going to bring us up to uh, 22. And my proficiency bonus is plus 22. three, but doubled because it's a tool check that I'm proficient in. That's actually a plus six. So that's going to be oh, a um, 28 okay. total. Can okay. I please have this flamethrower? Yes. Uh, you need to hit a 25 <laughs> to do this. I need to. Uh, 28. Oh, uh, you've yeah. never oh, seen man. Danny work so fast. Furious. Um, <laughs> screws flying everywhere she is all over like okay enoch come help me um uh enoch for what (laughs) it's worth is uh mostly like (laughs) um taking this he's like basically keeping watch um uh he climbs up to the top and sort of good idea uh, doesn't want to be in the way (laughs) doesn't really understand what you're doing and also is uh he's gone through some through a bit and is recentering himself um I like this uh, guy. Yeah, you hurriedly go, and then before you know, boom, the thing falls off. Anything, uh, is there, so you guys take all the chests, uh, what else are you taking, uh, from the inventory that I listed? You probably yeah, want the fuel, the right? Of gel right. And the so you got flamethrower flame and fuel. It's, the, the fuel is, um, descriptive. You don't need to, we, I'm not gonna count ammo for you guys. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Um, yeah, the, there was the suit the, of the half plate flamer. and the hellfire cool. weapons, uh, Cool. I don't Do have any. Want... I mean, there's a ton we of. We could health probably grab a few of the weapons. I think we would just. Oh, we just want to do that with if, if if we can do that within the hour. Sure, like. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Could... There's Finbar is really strong. Otherwise, I might say no. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. This he and uh, is can we get one of the motorcycles? You want to take a look? Okay, take and he outlier. sees everybody else running around grabbing their things. They're like, okay, they they <laughs> earned this. Let let them get their stuff. And he's like, okay, you want this? Okay, all right. <laughs> you want you want this Aww. too? Okay. And Denny Thanks, pulls the uh, flamethrower down. Look what I got. And I'm like, yeah, jump. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's let's get this up in there too. All right. Team mom. Did we also get one of the motorcycles yeah, on board? You got the Are motorcycle. we good? Yeah. Um, okay. The okay. Okay. Uh, the hour passes. We should leave. I think, we should uh, get out of here. If nothing else. Yeah. Let, let's let's bounce. If nothing else, the army of the the army of the devils don't get these hellfire weapons. So that's true. That's true. Um, that's a good thing. Enoch boards. Thank you again for your timely intervention. Uh, I'm mm. sure there's more to discuss, but yeah, no yeah good work, Dan. Happy to be. Would you yeah. like to Gone be our captain? Place. No, okay, I'm okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's the whole thing. Don't worry about you, it. <laughs> Virla, you sit in the, sh- in the helm and I assume uh, use your plane shift to escape, uh, leaving behind the dusty red rocks uh, and blasted hellscape that is Avernus. Because we're a bad out of hell. Hey. Congratulations, guys. You hey, survived. careful, careful. Licensing. Yeah. Woo! And we'll go over uh, stuff next week um, that you found. Good but, idea. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Super cool. All right. Um, thank you all yeah. for joining, uh, for listening. I hope hope you enjoyed that really long combat that was uh, brutal and awesome. We that did the train heist. Nice. We did. Really? Don't, don't. A pretty smooth yeah. train Really, heist. Austin? Really? <laughs> yep. Come on. <laughs>
I, I have no notes. The Perfect. First, Session two, that'll be first, fine. The first idea I had for this campaign was train heist in hell. And I was like, that'll be the first session. I was like, yes. oh, we should, we should like learn about the astral scene <laughs> signal and stuff first. Ease them then, into it. Then no, no, that's we're too on. strong. And boy, do I, oh, my next, next two sessions, uh, I'm so excited for too. We can only go up from here. Oh boy. Yeah, you, you're, well, Literally. you know, you can always end up in the graying wastes, which is the plane of uh, neutral evil. Um, uh, Ooh, the bottom nasty. of existence uh, under which uh, uh, the the chained oblivion that is Dune is uh, forever incarcerated. But, you know. Oh, fun. Entropy itself personified. Next time on Rolling <laughs> with Difficulty. <laughs> Thank you for joining, everyone. Thank you for playing, guys. Uh, as always, Woo! I love playing D&D with you. So, uh, yes. bye-bye. Hi, I'm Noir, a.k.a. Virla. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Rolling with Difficulty. We'll be back next week with another thrilling installment, but if you miss us before then, be sure to check out our Twitter and Instagram for more D&D nonsense. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email the pod at rollwithdifficulty at gmail.com. Links to all that and more in the show notes below. If you enjoyed the show, please rate us and leave a review on your preferred podcast platform. Thanks!